Welcome to the Town Board meeting and public hearing on Thursday, August 28, 2014. I move to open the meeting. Please stand and we'll salute the flag. Emergency exits are to my right behind the town clerk and also the door you came in. Roll, please. Councilman Delango? Here. Councilman Hitzelberger? Here. Councilman Doyle? Here. Councilman Prody? Here. And Supervisor Prody? Here. Make a motion to open public hearing for local law for fee and lieu of affordable housing. Second. All in favor? Yes. Yes. Any opposed? Is there any public comment for on the local law for fee in lieu of affordable housing? No one signed up. No one signed up? Yes. Can I ask a question? I, I didn't even know that was going to be on the agenda. What, what is it about? Can you give a quick little synopsis? I didn't even, excuse my ignorance. <laughs> It's actually Silo Ridge is going to pay the town in lieu of oh. providing workforce housing. Yeah. It's that resolution. So okay. Yeah. And it's actually workforce housing. Is there any other public comment? I make a motion to close the public hearing, the local law for fee in lieu of affordable housing. I'll second it. What's the amount? I'm sorry. Yeah, what's the amount? Uh, the public comment part of the public hearing is over. I'm going to read the resolution and it'll be self explanatory. Thank you. <coughs> resolution number 35. Adoption by the Town Board of the Town of Amenia of Local Law Number 2 of 2014, 14, entitled A Local Law Establishing a Fee to Be Paid in Lieu of Providing Workforce Housing. Whereas the resolution was duly adopted on July 24, 2014, by the Town Board of the Town of Amenia, introducing Local Law Number 2 of 2014, entitled A Local Law Establishing a Fee to Be Paid in Lieu of Providing Workforce Housing and for a public hearing to be held by the Town Board at Town Hall 4988 Route 22, Amenia, New York, at 7 p.m. at August 28, 2014, to hear all interest, interested parties on said proposed local law number two. Whereas notice of said public hearing was duly advertised in the Millerton News, the official newspaper of the Town of Amenia, on August 14, and posted on the Town Clerk's sign board on July 24. Whereas said public hearing was duly held at the Town Hall at 7 p.m. on August 28, 2014, and all parties in attendance were permitted an opportunity to speak on behalf of or in opposition to said proposed local law or any part thereof. Whereas on August 27, 2014, the Town of Amenia Planning Board, through its attorney, David Everett Esquire, advised the Town Board Attorney Denise M. Fitzpatrick Esquire that the planning board has no comments on the proposed local law, whereas pursuant to section 239M of general municipal law, the Dutchess County Department of Planning and Development on August 27, 2014, provided its comments of two minor changes to the proposed law with its recommendation that the department recommends that the board rely on its own study of the facts in the case with due consideration of the above comments whereas upon consideration of the comments and recommendations of the Dutchess County Department of Planning and Development, the Town Board has incorporated two minor changes in the proposed law as attached to this resolution, whereas pursuant to Part 617 of the implementing regulations pertaining to Article 8, State Environmental Quality Review Act, Seeker, it has been determined by the Town Board that adoption of the proposed local law does not constitute an action as defined and could be considered without further regard to seeker. 
whereas the town board, after due deliberation, finds it in the best interest of the town to adopt said local law. Now, therefore, the town board hereby adopts said local law as local law number two of 2014 entitled a local law establishing a fee to be paid in lieu of providing workforce housing, a copy of which is attached here to and made part of, made a part hereof. And the town clerk, B, and she hereby is directed to enter said lo local law in the minutes of this meeting and to enter said local law in the local law book of the town and to give due notice of the adoption of said local law to, to file said local law with the New York Secretary of State. The foregoing resolution was voted upon with all councilmen voting as follows. Supervisor Purdy. Discussion. Action. Uh, excuse me. Well, you can call constable. Well, you're gonna have to sit down. I believe that you should ask for comment after you read the proposition. It's improper not to. Sit down. I can stand all night long. Well, you can stand all night long, but nobody's going to pay Nobody any attention to you. Nobody here knows what the you. local law is. Nobody knows what the resolution is, and you cannot proceed this way in a democracy, like you're going to in the next one. I make a motion to accept the local law. Is there a second? Is there a second? I'll second. Of course. Discussion. Although the second change made, I agree with Denise, is not substantial. Um, I think the first change that was made is substantial. What do you guys think? Because it goes from make all improvements, you know, you can make any improvement you want to, to narrowing it down to just making capital improvements. And I did check and um, was told that we would find out in the first lawsuit that came up against it. So is it worth to take the risk of a lawsuit about this for that change? Um, or should we just, you know, reissue it and reissue the public hearing notice? What do you think, Mike? What, where are you talking about? Sure. In section one, paragraph B, um, paragraph two. Yeah. Uh, I can't hear her. Right here? You need to turn up your mic. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's, it's up pretty high. I think oh, it's, it's just the air conditioner. That's better. <laughs> Can you read the sentence that you are concerned about? Yeah. The Workforce Housing Trust Fund shall be used exclusively to provide for the acquisition, purchase, planning, development, construction, improvement, rehabilitation, sale or resale, rental, subsidy, support, or other legal means of creating or supporting more workforce housing for income qualified households within the town and or to provide or make, and Denise has added capital based upon the recommendations that we got from, that was Dutchess County Planning, right, Denise? The word capital. Yeah. She's added capital improvement and then improvements to water and or sewer infrastructure to the hamlets of Amenia or Wasaic, provided by the town board after consultation with the town housing board shall determine that such contribution to such infrastructure substantially advances the town's goal of increasing the availability of workforce housing for the persons who are the intended beneficiaries of the workforce housing program as described. So whereas before it was just make improvements, now it reads make capital improvements. And that could be de deemed a substantial change from the law that we initially published for the public hearing. And so that's what, the what only question I have. The definition of capital improvement. Well, I think what's important, it says and or provide or make, let's take it as it read before, and or to provide or make improvements to water or, and or sewer infrastructure. If you're making improvements, I think, to infrastructure, they would have to be capital improvements. So, you know, my opinion is legally, I don't think it's a substantial change. I mean, improvements to infrastructure, I think necessarily has to be 
a capital improvement? What other improvements are you going to make to, you know, in infrastructure? So what you're saying is an improvement to a water or a sewer infrastructure is a capital improvement. Mm -hmm. There's no other type of improvement to water or sewer. I don't know what improvement you would make to infrastructure that wouldn't be a capital improvement. That's my opinion. I agree with that. I can't think of any infrastructure <coughs> improvement that would not also be a capital improvement. I mean, I think if it were not infrastructure, then, you know, perhaps. maybe you could get away with that, uh, right. not requiring that. But this is infrastructure. This is capital. There's no difference. But, I mean, do we have a definition of capital? It's not included in the resolution or the local law. So... I believe Denise is just using the I mean it's like a structural generic type of legal term capital. I think it says the same thing though. It's not a substantial change. So therefore Well that's the one I did ask about and they did say that it could be deemed a substantial change. That was closer to the line. Who said so that? the Association of Towns legal folks. And they look Since the I can't document. speak to Denise, I had to call and them. And was at the Association of Towns because there's a whole bunch of lawyers there. Uh, you know, I don't remember her name off the top of my head, but if it's that if important, could I could forward it. But I mean, that was it an helpful. attorney? Mm -hmm. I think our lawyer Trump's Association of Towns, I've always understood that. I mean, that's just the advice I've gotten from our Association of Towns. Every time I call them, they say, has your own attorney weighed in? That's their first question to me. And I say yes or no. If I've said yes, they say I would go with your professional attorney. And I gave clear. them Denise's opinion because she had sent it to us in email. Uh, if it would be helpful if you would forward that kind of information to us so that we would then have that kind of information ahead of time. I don't believe that I would go with Association of Towns who doesn't understand this whole issue the way our own attorney has. That would be my opinion. And um, before we, does anybody else have any other discussion? Um, I mean, can we read, you know, what the, what we are getting for the units? Um, I'm going to read the whole thing. You're going to read the whole thing? Okay. Yes. Um, actually, this local law, when um, the public hearing was advertised. The local law was available in the town clerk's office from and the time posted on the website. and posted on the website. Yeah. So it's been available to people before this meeting. But I will read it now so that everyone understands what it says. And this is the one with the changes. Yes. Because the, only the original was posted on the website. I don't know about the town clerk's office. A local law establishing a fee to be paid in lieu of providing workforce housing, be it enacted by the town board or the town of Amenia town board as follows. Section 121-42N, number one, fee to be paid in lieu of, provided, of providing workforce housing, purpose and intent, the town board hereby implements 121-42N by establishing a fee to be paid into a dedicated town workforce housing trust fund as an alternative to the construction of workforce housing where such housing is either mandated or available as a condition of a density bonus and by authorizing the creation of a town workforce housing trust fund for the purpose of receiving funds from payments and or fees and our gifts collected or received by the town pursuant to the town's workforce housing law in this section. B, town workforce housing trust fund. There is hereby there is hereby authorized to be created pursuant to section 10 of New York State Municipal Home Rule Law, a town workforce housing trust fund, workforce housing trust fund for the purpose of receiving funds from payments and or fees collected by the town pursuant to the town's workforce housing law. And this section establishing a fee to be paid in lieu of providing workforce housing and funds from any gifts for the purpose of providing workforce housing. Deposits into the Workforce Housing Trust Fund shall include, at a minimum, all revenues from payments and fees collected by the town pursuant to the town's workforce housing law 
and this section and any gifts for the purpose of provided, providing workforce housing. Such workforce housing trust fund shall be a segregated municipal fund administered by the town board. The workforce housing trust fund shall be used exclusively to provide for the acquisition, purchase, planning, development, construction, improvement, rehabilitation, sale or resale, rental subsidy support, or other legal means of creating or supporting more workforce housing for income qualified households within the town and or to provide or make capital improvements to water and or sewer infrastructure to the hamlets of Amin or Wasaic, provided the town board after consultation with the town housing board shall determine that such a contribution to such infrastructure substantially advances the town's goal of increasing the availability of workforce housing for the persons who are the intended beneficiaries of the workforce housing program as described in section 121-42. Interest earned or accrued on monies deposited in the workforce housing trust fund shall be credited to and become part of said fund. Pending expenditures from such workforce housing trust fund monies therein may be invested in the manner provided by law, except as previously set forth herein, in no event shall monies deposited in the Workforce Housing Trust Fund be transferred to any other account unless such transfer shall be determined by the town board after consultation with the housing board to be in furtherance of the workforce housing goals of the town as set forth in 121-42. Cost of administering the Workforce Housing Trust Fund as it is applied toward advancing the workforce housing program shall not exceed 10% of the average fund balance for each calendar year. C, fee, the town board hereby establishes a fee to be paid into the workforce housing trust fund as an alternative to the construction of workforce housing where such housing is either mandated or available as a condition of a density bonus. Fees paid as an alternative to the construction of workforce, workforce housing shall be paid to and deposited into the Town of Amenia Workforce Housing Trust Fund. After review and consideration of the provisions of Section 121-42, consultation with the Housing Board, review and consideration of an economic analysis performed at the request of the Town Board, and the standard of practice that workforce housing units be of the same or similar quality and sign as the market rate units, the Town Board establishes a fee to be paid into the Workforce Housing Trust Fund in lieu of providing workforce housing as follows. A, for each workforce housing unit that would be required to be built pursuant to 121-42, consisting of two or fewer bedrooms, a fee of 11,000 and no dollars per <coughs> unit fee. B, for each for workforce housing unit that would be required to be built pursuant to 121-42, consisting of three or more bedrooms, a fee of 25,000 and no dollars per unit fee. The town board hereby reserves the right and its sole discretion to annually review, obtain a new analysis of, reconsider, recalculate, and revise the amount of fees to be paid in lieu of constructing workforce housing as set forth herein due to market changes or other factors where an applicant for a phased development shall elect to pay a fee in lieu of constructing workforce housing in accordance with a phasing schedule as described as 121-42C4. The applicant shall be obligated, obligated to pay the fee in lieu in effect at the time payment is made into the workforce housing trust fund for that portion of workforce housing units, which would then be due pursuant to the phase schedule set forth in 121-42-C4. However, the applicant alternatively may elect to pay the fee in lieu at an earlier time in accordance with the fee in lieu schedule in effect at the earlier time of payment. In accordance with the provision of section 121-42-C4 of the zoning law, Certificates of occupancy may be issued for the market rate units only after payments for the fee in lieu of constructing workforce housing have been made into the Workforce Housing Trust Fund for the required percentage of units set forth in the phasing schedule 121-42-C4. Finan D, financial guarantee or security. The town board has the right to require the posting of a financial guarantee and or security to the satisfaction of the town board to ensure timely payments required as an alternative to the construction of workforce housing. And um, 
the amounts that are in the law came from Dutchess County Planning based on their market analysis. I'd also like to weigh in that Sue Gregory has been the chair of the Workforce Housing Committee and she wants us to pass it as soon as possible. We forwarded to it to her to review. She said, do us a favor, let's get this law in place. It's been out there for a long time. Uh, Ann Saylor has been working on it, Mary Ling, Hudson River Housing, Ann Saylor's with the uh, uh, County Planning and Development, Economic Development, and all of these groups have weighed in. Planning Board has had no comment. It seems to me, unless somebody can say what kind of improvement to the infrastructure of our water sewer districts would not be also considered a capital improvement, it is a moot point. It is one and the same. And unless somebody can cite case law or uh, provide a, a, an opinion otherwise in writing or forward it to us electronically so that we can look at it and form an opinion. I mean, if they cited case law that said, you know, this could be a problem, I'd take, you know, we'd, we'd wait, right? But do you have a a printed well, opinion from to, the association? To counter that, um, I don't believe the town attorney provided case law or, or an opinion in writing. Because she's not saying that it's going to be challenged. That it was but if Association of Towns told me that you were in a for problem, it to what not they do be a substantial change. is provide case law that's, that backs them up and then you and your attorney decide how you want to proceed. That's how I've always found the Association of Towns. But if you can forward that to us at your earliest convenience, that would be good so we could have that kind of information. And um, I believe before we can actually vote, we need to return to regular meeting. So I make a motion we return to regular meeting so we can vote. I'll second that. Madam Supervisor. Go ahead and vote. Pardon me. Point of order. Where do these numbers come from? I just said Ann Saylor from the Dutchess County Economic okay. Development. You don't need to address them. Oh. It's out of order. Of course not. We're, we're at a vote. Oh, we're ready. No, we're ready. Um, we're going back to regular meeting? We're back at regular meeting. All we're voting in the loo. No, we need to vote individually. We need to no, roll. To return to regular? Yes. Oh, yes, we can. Shipper. Any opposed to returning back to regular meeting? To make sure it's clear. Yes. Opposed. And call the roll. I have to do the seeker review. We'll do that before I we vote on this one? Yeah, we'll do the seeker review. Well, I was going to do it after we voted on the actual law. Do we not need to do that first? Okay. Okay, I make a resolution that the town board determines that local law number two for fee in lieu of workforce housing is not an action within the purview of seeker. Is there a second? I'll second that. Councilman Delango. You proposed secret after you proposed the law? No. She's doing secret first. No, no, no. But <laughs> we didn't vote on the law. But you didn't have a secret here. Or claim that there was no secret. I just Councilman vote. Delango. We're going to head and vote. What's the vote for? She made a secret. motion and it was seconded that this yeah. is not Which we don't have the uh, it's not under seeker. A finding needs to be made um, under seeker about the adoption of the local law. Um, the regulations that are formulated under the State uh, Environmental Quality Review Act defined um, what an action is. Um, adoption of a local law that would affect the environment would be an action in this case. You know, this law is not something that would affect the environment. I thought we needed the form that said it. Not if it's not an action under seeker. If it's not an action under the law, then you don't have to go through the seeker process. It doesn't fall within the law. On that motion, Councilman Delango. So we're voting that this has nothing to do with the environment. Right. This resolution is not affecting the environment. Yes. Yes. Councilwoman Hitzelberger? Yes. 
Council Woman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Prody? Yes. And Supervisor Prody? Yes. Now resolution number 35? Well, we need to, yes, we need to vote on the resolution. <coughs> I made the Keep motion. The and same. Stephen. Second. Is there any to accept resolution number 35? That's the be in lieu. Yes. She read those. Supervisor Perotti? Yes. Councilwoman Doyle? Yes. Councilwoman Hitzelberger? I object to consideration of this matter. No. Sir, no. Councilman Perotti? Yes. Councilman Delango? Yes. Okay, I make a motion to open the public hearing for local law for appointment of a sole appointed assessor. <coughs> Is a second? I'm sorry. I'm yes. just opening the public hearing. Well, we don't know what it is. Yes. Since we a workshop, we don't know what the resolution is. All in favor to open the public hearing yeah. for local law number three? Yes. 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 Any opposed? Mr. Uvard? I certainly have uh, public comments on this. Um, I would respectfully request that you read the law uh, per protocol, per the town law manual printed by Association of Towns. So I would re request that you read that before my comments. Local law number three of 2014, local law providing for the appointment of a sole appointed Assessor pursuant to Article 3 of the Real Property Tax Law, Section 1 Title, the law shall be entitled a local law providing for the appointment of a sole appointed assessor pursuant to Article 3 of the Real Property Tax Law, Section 2, Purpose and Intent. The purpose of this local law is to provide for the appointment of a sole appointed assessor in the town of Amenia, Amenia pursuant to Section 328 of Article 3 of the Real Property Tax Law of the State of New York real property tax law and to abolish the elective office of sole assessor. Section 3, Amendment of Town Code. Chapter 4, Entitled Assessors of the Town Code of the Town of Amenia. Town Code is amended as follows. Section 4-1 is amended to read legislative intent. The Town of Amenia has determined the necessity to appoint a sole appoint of assessor pursuant to 320, Section 328, Article 3 of Real Property Tax Law and to abolish the elective office of sole assessor. Section 4-2 is amended to read appointment of sole appointed assessor. The town board of the town of Amenia hereby enacts pursuant to section 328 of article three of the real property tax law that from and after November 8, 2014, there should be an appointed assessor to be appointed by the town board as provided in section 310 of article three of the real property tax law. This term shall be provided in Section 310 of Article 3 of the Real Property Tax Law, and the elective office of sole assessor shall be abolished. Section 4.3 remains as provisions subject to referendum. The chapter, this chapter shall be subject to mandatory referendum in the matter prescribed in Section 23 <coughs> of the Municipal Home Rule Law. Section 4-4 is amended to read approval by qualified voters. This chapter shall only become effective if approved by a majority of the qualified voters of the town of Amenia voting at the general election to be held on November 4, 2014. And if so approved, shall be effective immediately on filing with the New York Department of State, Section 4, Separability. The provisions of this local law are separable, and if any provision, clause, sentence, subsection, word, or part thereof is held illegal, invalid, unconstitutional, or inapplicable, to any person or circumstance such illegality, invalidity, or unconstitutionality, or inapplicability, 
shall not affect or impair any of the remaining provisions, clauses, sentences, subjects, and subsections, words or parts of this local law or their application to other persons or circumstances. It is hereby declared to be the legislative intent that this local law would have been adopted if such illegal, invalid, or unconstitutional provision, clause, sentence, subsection, word or part had not been included therein. And as if such person or circumstance to which the local law or part thereof is held inapplicable has been specifically exempt therefrom. Section five, effective day and applicability. This local law shall only become effective if approved by a majority of the qualified voters of the town of Amenia voting at the general election to be held on November 4, 2014, and if so approved shall be effective immediately on filing with the New York Secretary of State. Public comment. Thank you very much. Good evening, Wayne Uvard. As many of you know, I enjoy reading. Last week, while reading a book from our wonderful small local library, I came across a quote from Samuel Taylor Coleridge, and I quote, common sense is an uncommon degree in what the world calls wisdom. I'd like to repeat that quote. Common sense in an uncommon degree is what the world calls wisdom. Calls wisdom. The town board should think about that. We're all here tonight because we love our town, our small town. We serve, we volunteer, and we try to shop local. I think our farmer's market tomorrow morning, or tomorrow afternoon, is a good example. We stay local. In the past, any position that became available was always advertised and we held interviews. For assessor, our supervisor said it was not necessary. At the August 14th workshop, Supervisor Perotti introduced local law number three to change our assessor from elected that we've had for many, many years and we'll change it to an appointed position. It was seconded by Ms. Doyle quickly in fact, so quick, she seconded it again. I'm strongly against this change. Otherwise, the town board is taking away our voters' rights this year and the years in the future. Taking away our right to vote is removing our freedom. Taxation without representation. That is the history of our country. Government is set up with checks and balances. Ask yourself, who is the appointed assessor directly responsible to? The town board or the local homeowner and taxpayer? In the last couple of weeks, I've been approached uh, up, up by the post office when I was up at the plaza and even when I'm on the street walking. I've been approached by our residents and our taxpayers they are telling me they wanted to stay an elected position. During the August 14th workshop, I asked the town board to take some time, discuss this with the folks you represent. But it appears that three members have already made up their minds and want to rush forward to make this change. When I was town supervisor, there was a county push to eliminate our local justice courts and town clerks. There was a plan to use a central location out near Poughkeepsie to handle all the local court cases and the town clerk duties. As a strong group, the Supervisors and Mayors Association worked against this to keep the offices local and in our towns. Eliminating our judges and town clerks was a bad idea then, and changing to an appointed assessor is a wrong idea now. Thanks for your time. Kevin Casson. Hi, good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to speak, Kevin Casson of Media. Um, irrespective of who's running, I think this is a very bad idea. To a certain degree, we have a separation of powers. The town board spends the money that they're given, that they're allocated, 
tax assessor, you know, finds out, uh, raises it, uh, finds out how much money there is to spend. To combine those two things in one means the people who are deciding how to spend money also get to decide how to raise it. Now, I'm not impugning this board, but imagine, go back, I mean, you're giving a power away. You're giving it away forever, five years from now. What do we know the board will look like 10 years from now, 20 years from now? Go back in time. Are there some of you on one side of the political aisle that, wouldn't, that would have wanted to see your uh, uh, adversaries have this sort of power? Um, no matter which side of the aisle you're on, when you go back 20 years? Um, um, and how subtly the pressure can be put on the assessor who's now responsible to a majority of three. Like I said, I'm not talking about this particular board, any other board in the future, okay? This isn't personal except in one case maybe. Um, not with any of you, um, to just go into the tax assessor's office and muse if we only had so much more funds, 100,000 more, we could do that $50,000 project because half roughly has to go to the county and not impugn anything, not do anything unethical, just sort of hint at it. That poor person knows, oh, I owe my future and my job to these people. And again, not you, but any other board in, in the future. This is ripe for abuse. I mean, you were just asking for it. Um, um, for two conservative Republicans, and I don't know how Mike's gonna vote. Um, I'm pretty sure I know Gretchen's against it. I mean, I thought there was a libertarian strain in the Republican Party that wanted people to choose and to control themselves. You know, this is, this is sort of the, the uber state left. I mean, the only one who's really, you know, not going against her core beliefs is Vicki Doyle. Um, this is being pushed by the state. Uh, uh, like Wayne said, they tried it once before with other, with other uh, offices. You have to make, and, and the tax assessor does not have to live locally. The idea that this assessor has to walk amongst us, run into us at the store, at Freshtown, at the post office, knowing that the actions they're going to take are going to have severe consequences upon their neighbors is key. Um, and there are some rights you can't vote away. Can a majority vote away? The, um, the lawyer pointed out, technically, you do have the right to do this, but I have a question, has that law ever been challenged in court? Because no law is really set in stone until it's been challenged in court and approved. I got a feeling this one, where you could vote away an elected official, would easily fall if, if somebody only decided to sue. Um, there's some things you can't vote away. You can't vote away a republic. You can't vote away parts of the Constitution. You can't vote away the Bill of Rights. A majority can't decide a minority doesn't have rights. There are things you should not even have the right to be able to vote away. And, and only in this cockamamie state where they pass so many laws every year that nobody can keep up with this, with this tsunami of laws and, and track it properly. But to, to, get, to, to vote away your right to vote, I mean, my God, this is, this is what we're hearing on the news that Vladimir Putin is doing, and, and who, who votes away their right to vote? To me, that's so stunningly un-American, I, I don't even know where to begin. I don't even care if you're allowed by law. You're voting away if, their right to vote. I'm, I'm, you know, sorry. And I think a lot of this came up of political, of personal animus towards the one candidate we have. I don't care, I'm sorry, Wayne, what you think of this man, Wayne Uvrod. Love him? hate him, he happens to be the only candidate. Now, we had an appointed assessor three and a half months ago. So, and the Democrats never put up a candidate for assessor after, after dear Ron Gazzoli passed away. The Repu no Republican offered a primary challenge to Wayne. Why is that? I could only muse, did people know we were gonna dissolve the office and have an appointed assessor? It's a fairly logical conclusion. I have no proof, but it, and this also could have then come up three and a half months ago and given the town more time to think about it rather than a two week window of time in August, which is the greatest vacation month, you know, where more people take vacation than any other time in the calendar year. What? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm, almost, I'm almost done. I don't know if I took five minutes or not. Thank you for your patience. Um, I thought that was you telling me to shut up. Um, be quiet, excuse me. So it's got nothing to do with you guys personally, other than to the degree that you're voting for it. I'm just, I'm, I'm sorry, a four-fifths Republican board should have a more libertarian strain in them, at least a little libertarianism, just, you know, maybe not Ron Paul libertarianism, but just an inkling of it. Why would you even propose, I mean, to me, 
you're creating animosity and division in the town. This was not an issue. This had never come up. Why are we creating an issue where none existed? Why are we pass, trying to pass a law for a problem we don't have? But trying to pass a law is creating problems. I think this is a stunning mistake, and if this passes, I will put my full resources and everybody who I can convince to come out and vote against us, and all you'll be doing is wasting taxpayer money on a re Oh, and also the conflict of interest. I, I think this jilts the election. I, who's going to vote for somebody when, on the same ballot, is erase the position? Um, I don't know. Is that why we don't have challengers to win? Because if he's the only one, he can't make a voter suppression case. If there were other candidates, he'd have a slam dunk voter suppression case. Is that why the Democratic Party, or there was no Republican primary opposition? This whole thing sticks to high heaven to me. I don't like it. No person who loves their town or their fellow citizens and wants their taxes under control should even for a moment before this. And it's got nothing to do with you personally. Who knows who's going to be on the board 20 years from now? And do what I said. Would you have wanted this power to be in certain town boards, town boards' hands five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago? I think all of you would answer no to that. Maybe the different administrations, but I think you would all answer no to that. Thank you very much for your time. Is there any other? Pat Nelligan. <laughs> Pat Nelligan, Lavelle Road, Aminia, from Wasaic. I would apologize to the board about my outbursts, except as Wayne pointed out, I wasn't wrong that the proposition should be read before the public hearing. Thank you. Um, on this one, I don't, capers, creepers, have you been taking lessons from me? <laughs> Dear God, no. Wayne, Wayne, you are, and I went to school together. We were in the same <laughs> class, we played soccer together, and we never liked each other. I didn't like how he was supervising many times. But this isn't about Wayne Ubart. This is about what's right. And if any of you can sit there tonight who knew Ron Gazzoli and ask him what you should do tonight, Ron and his wife would tell you that what you're doing is an abomination. Ferguson has shown us that the government is trying to cram everything down our throat. And it's not far away from the local level. Ferguson, Missouri, woman. Ferguson, that Ferguson. Government taking over what it shouldn't take over without due process and the electoral process is absolutely going to kill this country. And this is just a teeny tiny one. I don't care that you don't like him, Victoria. I don't care he's the only candidate. If there were any other, I'd probably vote for him but it's wrong what you're doing. Any other public comment? <laughs> uh, could you come up to the podium, please, Rosanna? Uh, Rosanna Hamm, Aminia, uh, Route 343. I just want to know what the rationale is for, for the change. Wayne's running alone. No, I, 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 want, no, I want to know what the board's rationale is. The rash, excuse me, Huh, that's what it is. Ignore him. Uh, basically, the rationale is that for the town to have someone with experience, knowledge of it, ob and be objective and have continuity for the office um, is the reason we're looking to make an appointed position. Now, the elected position right now is not a, for a full term. It's for an unexpired term of three years. And then a new, and a new election would, be, uh, would have to happen after that three years <clears throat> for six years. Um, in the county, there are only five towns with elected assessor. Uh, the town of Northeast in Amenia has a single elected assessor. Pine Plains, Milan, and Rhinebeck have three elected uh, assessors on a board. Uh, the sole appointed assessor term begins October 
2013 and September 30th, 2019, so that you would have continuity in the office. Um, having, according to, um, I've been talking quite a bit with the director of real property, and he said, having an appointed assessor provides some benefits to the town. The assessor need not be a resident of the town. An assessor can be shared with one or more other towns with or without a cooperative agreement. This opens up the candidate pool significantly. An example of that is Dover, who has an appointed assessor that they share with Beekman. Beekman pays 60% of the assessor's salary. Dover pays 40%. The term of office is six years. Appointed assessors are required to meet minimum qualification standards prior to appointment. Now I sent um, the minimum requirements are graduation from high school or possession of an accredited high school equivalency diploma or two years of satisfactory full-time paid experience and an occupation involving the valuation of real property, such as assessor, appraiser, valuation, data manager, real property, appraisal aid, or the like. Such experience shall be deemed satisfactory if it is demonstrated that the experience primarily was gained in the performance of one or more of the following tasks, collection and recording of property inventory data, preparation of comparable sales analysis report, preparation of signed valuation, or appraisal estimates or reports using cost, income, or data, market data approaches to value. Mere listing of real property for potential sale or preparation of asking prices for real estate for potential sale, using multiple listing reports or other published asking prices is not a qualifying experience. Experience and knowledge are extremely important in the assessor's office. To date, we have six or seven cert cases, which are cases where large property owners, some of them a million dollars, are protesting their assessment. You need to have a knowledgeable, experienced person in place in order to guide the attorney and work with the attorney to uh, adjudicate these cases in court. So it's important to have someone with experience, with the knowledge. Um, that would be our current acting assessor, Kathleen Myers who's been, um, who has uh, the state certified candidate for assessor qualifications. I um, sent her qualifications to the Office of Real Property Tax Service Educational Office. And I got a letter back that said, I have reviewed the application for qualifications review as you requested for the position of sole appointed assessor. Kathleen Myers meets the minimum qualification standard for sole appointed assessor as prescribed in real property tax law. I mean, that's, that's the important thing about having a qualified, knowledgeable, experienced person in the assessor role. Um, and and I, I just, I, I understand that, but you know, what concerns me is she meets the minimum requirements. No, she meets the MAC. She has been, she meets the minimum requirements for certification of assessor. She's been in, um, she's been in the Dutchess County Real Property Tax Service Agency for 38 years. Eight years, she was the director. She's, she knows all the duties of the assessor because she used to train the assessors, including the assessment calendar, validation methodology, exemption and special district administration. And she, she knows the state assessment role software. There's specific software that you need to know in order to be able to use in order to properly function as an assessor. Do we share her with anybody? Can we? Do we? No. No, because what happened when, um, when Ron passed away, uh, under real property law, we were allowed to appoint an acting assessor. Now, that person did not have to live locally. And we um, sent the credentials to the state of Katherine Johnson 
for the town in Northeast. So we were able to use her as a temporary assessor for three months. However, the way the law reads, you can only have one person in that role for three months. And then if there's going to be another three month period, then you need to appoint someone else who meets the education requirements for appointed assessor. And Kathleen Myers certainly did with all her, um, with all her um, employment with the real property office. Um, she was the director there for, for eight years. So she's very knowledgeable. She has experience. She knows how to run an assessor's office and, and exactly what needs to be done as far as um, our tax cert cases and our over our equalization rate is 105 instead of 100. She knows exactly what needs to be done to start working on that to get it down. And we feel that at this particular junction in time, with what we have before, before us, it is important for the town to have some, someone extremely knowledgeable, extremely experienced, who knows the assessor position and, and who has um, been a director for eight years of the agency and knows what needs to be done and can properly advise our attorney in our cases and also knows what needs to be done, the next steps for bringing our equalization down. I mean, the whole point of doing this isn't because um, of, a, of a person or anything personal. It's in the best interest of town, in the town, to have the most experience, the most knowledgeable person, and to have continuity um, through because right now we're on our second appointed person. Um, if this, if changing from elective to appointed is approved by the ballot, she would be changed from acting assessor to permanent assessor and would serve to 2019. And you advertised for that position? No. Um, we were told by the um, Office of Real Property that this isn't a position that is normally advertised for because of, the, of what is required um, as far as um, the education and the courses for this. We advertise for teachers, and that requires certification and education. I don't know why. The assessor's office, I mean, we're talking about the valuation. We're talking about what, what affects our taxes. I mean, it's a very, very specialized field. Um, and, what, and what most of the place, most of the towns in the county have done, have gone to sole appointed assessor. It doesn't mean that the sole appointed assessor is, is not responsible to the homeowner or the taxpayer. I mean, they would be responsible just as an elected assessor is. I mean, you know, appointed assessor isn't allowed to just do anything they want. And since that there are only five towns that still have elected, apparently most, most of the towns, in Dutchess County have gone to appointed. But interestingly enough though, most of those towns that still have elected are small towns like ours. Right. You know, that, that's the other thing. You know, you said Northeast, Pine Plains. I mean, those are all kind of equivalent towns in, to us. I, and I'm sure that a lot of the towns are, you know, are, are bigger towns. Um, and, and, you know, we'll have to see what the voters say. You know, I, I get that. But that, but that is the reason because you know, we just felt it was in the best interest of the town to have an experienced, knowledgeable person. And we were fortunate enough you know, to receive a letter from Kathleen who actually wanted to come there here and do that for us, right, to have someone of her question. caliber. Thank you.
Just a point of order there, when Victoria says we were fortunate enough to find, she means I, because it wasn't discussed in front of the full board. The research for it started in July, and all of this didn't come up until August in front of the board. I sent, as I got, when I got information, all this information, I sent it all to the board. They had it. Everybody has had everything that I've gotten. It was given to the board. Yep, later on. If we're still in public hearing? Yep, as far as I know. I just, um, there's a couple comments I'd like to make, and I, Ms. Hamme had some excellent questions. Um, there's certainly, just so the, the audience and the TV land knows, and our, our uh, the voters know, there's actually two, two different qualifications uh, for an assessor. There's qualifications for an elected assessor, and there's a little different standard for the appointed. So I certainly qualify for the elected assessor. Um, I've worked many certiorari cases in 14 years on the town board. Um, I worked them with Ron and Mr. Hayes. Uh, we worked through them. I'm not inexperienced. Uh, there's 1,800 parcels in our town. I'm very familiar with most of them. 1,790. Not 1,800. <coughs> I hope you're that accurate with the budget. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I have spoken to the director of real property, uh, Eric, and they are more than willing, as Kathy did. She trained the assessors, and this is nothing against Kathy. I worked with Kathy as supervisor. She worked on the, She helped me with the budget items. Um, so this is definitely nothing against Kathy. It's about the procedure that you're doing. But I did speak with Eric, um, and they are certainly willing to help local assessors. There's an association of assessors. The Association of Towns helps assessors. And there's training out there available. So thank you. Can I, can I ask a question? Um, you can. I just wondered, it, it's, I believe I understood that typically a town would pay less for, um, for the um, appointed. But if they share. If they share it. So that by going into the appointed, it would give us the opportunity, if necessary, to share that uh, full-time salary, let's say, yes. versus a part-timer. Which is what Dover does. But if you look at overall in New York, that generally they end up paying more than we're paying now if you go ahead and do the research. So this would be a shared position? It could be. I think it could be. No. No. No, then you're going to pay the full salary, so it wouldn't No, I'm just wondering so factually no if there is a difference or not. Michael. Michael Collins, Amenia. James Madison said it is proper to take alarm at the first experiment on our liberties regarding the issue of an appointed assessor rather than an elected one. At the last meeting, Vicki Doyle stated that dissension is an important part of democracy. Well, the right to vote is an equally important part of democracy. Mm -hmm. Spoken like a seasoned politician, she then thanked the supervisor for allowing the voters to decide whether they wanted to keep their right to vote. You may be able to talk from both sides of your mouth, but you cannot have it both ways. A mag magnifying glass was not necessary to read between the lines. How dare you believe the people of this town are that ignorant? I ask the people of Amina tur to turn out in force on November 4th and send a message to this town that they will not have their rights taken away. Is there any other public comment? Yeah, just add one thing, 20 seconds. Let Wayne go twice. Um, the appointed assessor does have to have more qualifications. You're correct in saying that. But this board could solve that another way, pass a resolution saying the elected assessor has to have the very same uh, uh, um, qualifications as an appointed one. That isn't you how it works. Huh? That isn't how it works. You have to go by real Point property order. law. He didn't ask a question. You can exceed state law. You just can't do less than state law. I, you know, and, and doing an assessment, you know, assessments happen maybe 100,000 days in this country. It's an appraisal. And, and I don't know, this, this isn't that complicated. You know what makes this stuff complicated? The state and all the regulations. And it seems like small town supervisors and mayors should be calling 100 other small town supervisors and mayors and saying, why can't we diminish these laws that are just making something so simple that, that banks do, that real estate agents do, that, that licensed appraisers do all the time? And the, and the only other part the assessor does is say, 
here's 100%, here's $100, we're going to tax you based on 50%, $50, and your actual tax is going to be 0.01%. I know that's highly simplified, but the only people who made this complicated are big government sycophants. Thank you so very much for letting me speak again. Thank you, Victoria. Is there any other public comment? Yes, everybody gets to speak twice tonight. I think that's the key. <coughs> We're forgetting that Wayne knows everybody in this town. To get some gal from Wappingers who might work part-time in East Oshkosh, who doesn't know anyone, doesn't really know the properties until, well, this one might know the properties because she's been here, but who knows if she'd be the one to stay. She might go somewhere else because they offer her more money. This is about us. This is about us being who we are, us having gone to school together, us arguing with each other, us having somebody that we can walk in the office and know who the hell he is, not somebody that we don't know. Now, Ron Gazzoli was one of the best guys I ever knew. And he disagreed with me four out of five times every time I'd go in there. But it was a pleasure dealing with him because he knew me. And I think that's important here. And that's what I think Mrs. Ham was saying. This is about a small town, not trying to fit in with the big boys. This is wrong. And I also think it's about money. Now, Miss Vicky brought it up. I think you have to pay for training. No, we do not. You do not? No. So if Wayne wins and the proposition goes down and he doesn't have all the knowledge he needs, the town isn't going to assist him in getting it with workshops? You're required as an assessor to take 12 credits a year. The assessor And who pays for that? Have the real property. The the Does. board has a line for paying for that, the, the, the mileage and expenses and stuff. And no, it absolutely will not for real property. She obviously doesn't know the law. Oh, so you, don't want, to actually, you don't want to spend the money to help an elected official I, it learn how any, to do his job. It doesn't have anything to do of course with it me does. spend. No, it doesn't. It doesn't have anything to do with me spending the money. Uh, real property is the one who offers the courses at no cost to the assessors. The only thing that the town is required to pay is um, you know, whatever they would pay for the person to be at work that day. I mean, the real property is the one who um, puts the bill for the courses, not the town. Speak up, please. No, and the, the mileage the expenses, mileage. yeah. Time mileage. We have to pay for that. No, they don't. They pay for it. Obviously, you don't know anything about it. But they well, I think for, she's the only one on the that board that does know anything. Well, and I, the only actually, one on the board that what? is about I'm gonna people. Take, I'm going to take uh, issue Take exception all you want. Now, I'm, well, you know what? I'm not going to listen to you. You know what? You know what? Um, excuse okay, me. Okay, Pat, you don't understand because I was an assessor. So if anybody here on this board <laughs> knows more about this than anybody, it would be me. And I used to be on the other side of the fence where, oh, the sole elected assessor. Until we had a problem in the neighboring town. When, you know, and I know Gretchen doesn't like to hear the history lesson, but I'm going to say it anyways. <clears throat> Nobody wanted to run for the position, so they had to ask somebody. She was fortunately Point of order, that was history of Northeast. I'm very interested in yeah, the well, you history know, this of Yeah, well, this is Northeastern Duchess. Thank you. This is Northeastern Duchess. He's, he and I live, before. I've You're lived here my entire life. Have you? Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Well, He's I definitely speaking. know the people in here. And I definitely know uh, the needs of the people in here. And what the people need is somebody that knows what they're doing. And I'm going to tell you something. The job of assessor is a lot more complicated than it was when there was an elected board of three back when I ran. I used to be a real estate broker. I used to do all of that stuff. I don't have my licenses anymore. I've given them up. And I did that by choice. But I think, I know Kathy has been involved and intricately involved in the creation of our GIS system that we so enjoy called parcel access. And I think that she is an asset to this town. You know, and 
I take exception with um, the brow beaters and the people that want to, yeah, you have a right to, to have your opinion. I have a right to have my opinion. I was elected by the people of this town, um, but I am my own person. I do have my own thoughts, and I believe that they entrusted me with my, my intellect to be able to make good decisions, and I believe that this is a good decision. I have no... I noticed the, the air of, uh, of, oh, what are the ulterior motives? Well, there are no ulterior motives from my standpoint. I just want the best person to do the job. Um, it's not, you don't want the wrong, pers wrong people uh, in that type of position that don't have the experience necessary to do the job properly. Um, and that is where I stand on it. That's my point of view. I used to believe that a sole elected assessor was the right way to go until I saw that happen. And I don't want it to happen again. And it can also go the other way with an elected position. You could get somebody who's nefarious and has a, uh, a real estate background um, that uh, would uh, alter assessments um, for uh, material gain on the elected side too. Um, we all know that, you know, there have been talks, there's been speaking about, you know, uh, people having conflicts of interest and of things of that nature. Well, the same thing can go for an elected assessor. If we're getting an appointed assessor who is a professional, who this is what they do, this is what they train for. If they work in another town, that's great. Uh, I don't see a problem with that, especially uh, the current person that we have appointed to that position. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I think this is a good idea. I think it's a positive step forward for the town. And one thing has been forgotten. Uh, if the people do not want this, if, they decide, if the majority of the people decide they don't want, they want to stick with the sole elected assessor, they can vote against it in November. And um, so everybody's talking about us taking away freedoms and taking people's right to vote away, and we're not. We've actually created a situation where people can voice their opinion in the ballot box. They can either vote for Wayne or they can just and continue the sole elected assessor and vote against uh, um, and vote against uh, uh, a sole appointed. They have that option. So we're not taking anything away. We're just putting another option on the table for people. So that's how I look at it. Um, yeah, I just want to clarify that the. Um Office of Real Property pays for everything for the education of an assessor, including mileage, including meals. I, I think one thing Stephen said that was um, pretty telling is that you can either vote for Wayne or you can vote for the sole assessor. And I think that's, um, those are two separate issues. Wayne Newbert is running for assessor if somebody wants to run as a right and a candidate against them, they're more than welcome to. That is a separate issue. And that's something that Michael Chamberlain came last week to speak to us about how having this particular resolution was interfering with an election process. So you can vote for Wayne or vote for a right in or not vote for an assessor. And then additionally, it is vote for keeping your right to vote or vote for losing your right to vote for an assessor position. And I think that was a very telling thing. Thank you, Stephen. Is there any other public comment to come up to the podium, Rosanna? And, and I uh, also want, I, one of the reasons I came here tonight was to clarify in my own mind exactly what both sides of the situation were. And I think that a lot of people don't really know what they are. And I think it's important to know what both sides of the situation are in order to make an informed decision. And I think fighting and screaming doesn't really help. Um, it just no. makes us all look <laughs> ridiculous. And so, um, so Stephen, you know, I think your point is correct that no matter what happens here tonight, what happens on November 4th in the ballot box is really what's going to make a difference. And so I think, you know, the people that um, should be out pounding the pavement, I guess, um, you know, selling their, their, their thoughts on
how they feel it should go. But I, you know, I, I sometimes feel uncomfortable when I see all the yelling and screaming. So just so you know. That makes two of us. <laughs> I just want to make one comment myself uh, on this issue is that um, I understand Kath Kathleen Myers has served under various administrations. It wasn't, she was reappointed eight, how many times by different, uh, twice by different legislators? Yeah, if you could just explain how it's a little bit different um, being um, that it's a professional position that you've been holding at the county level and that different administrations have <coughs> reappointed you and it really hasn't been a political issue, it's more on your credentials. I mean, that's could you go the, to the difference podium, that you would see at in having an appointed versus an elected. That's what my understanding would be, is that you are given the opportunity to look outside. You know, you're looking at a wider range of candidates who bring their expertise to the table and you make it a decision based on their qualifications, not anything other than that. And that is best done at the town board level. We appoint the zoning enforcement officer. Uh, we appoint the planning board members. We appoint uh, the Recreation Commission. We appoint a lot of important positions and the town board members are given that opportunity. <coughs> this would be yet another opportunity for the town board to select candidates based on their qualifications, not necessarily. This would open it wider to be well beyond the, the Menia town borders. Right, well, um, I was the county director of real property tax and I was appointed by uh, Bill Steinhouse, and then um, that was validated by the county legislature uh, twice. Um, the qualifications for county director are, of course, different than those of assessor. Uh, and uh, to tell you the truth off the top of my head, I can't really even remember what they were, um, but I, I did qualify uh, for county director. Um, as far as uh, Assessor goes, yes, there are very specific qualifications. Um, elected assessors do have to take continuing ed, just like uh, sole appointed assessors. Um, I think the standards are a little bit different, maybe not quite as many credits. I, I'm not sure. I've you know kind of been out of it for a few years, so I, you know, I'm sure that probably some of the um, laws or rules have changed that, you know, I'm not really aware of. Um, but that's, I, was there anything else you well, wanted me to explain? If you could also, uh, I'm just uh, trying to remember all of the credentials that you bring to the table that we okay. wouldn't have if we went with the sole elected. So you're a candidate. Okay. You're yes. willing to serve in that position. <laughs> in fact, uh, we go that way in November if the uh, election uh, does away with the elected and goes with the sole appointed. And you also had uh, real experience with the um, software that was that is required you, you to use. So you're fully trained, not only trained, but also helped with the implementation of that in the, at the county level. Is that correct? Well, um, I did help with the uh, GIS, uh, which is known as Parcel Access. Um, actually, that program was written and designed by our IT department, but uh, we played a very important role in bringing the data, all of the data that you see out there, um, into GIS. And that was also um, the, the town assessors. It, it's all the data that the town assessors have collected you know, over the years. Um, tax maps were done by my department, Real Property Tax Service Agency. So all of the property line information is from Dutchess County Real Property Tax. Uh, so uh, I, I didn't, as far as the design goes, like I said, the architecture was actually done by our IT department. Um, we, you know, I was just part of the team that helped um, with a lot of input as to how it should be. 
Uh, I have taught a lot of the classes that the assessors need to take, uh, you know, data collection and, and that sort of thing over the years. I've also had to take a lot of those classes uh, to maintain um, my continuing ed um, certification. Uh, so, you know, I've taken a lot of the courses right alongside of the assessors. And how important is it to have an experienced assessor represent our town when it comes to um, representing the town for the sartorial cases that are outstanding? You mentioned eight or seven or eight mm -hmm. cases, and it amounts to millions of dollars. Is that correct that we need to defend on our tax rolls? Otherwise, we're all affected. Mm. How important is it in, in that uh, process? Well, um, I think that you need to have some idea of value, valuation, you know, how to come up with a value. Uh, you know, you need some, a little bit of appraisal experience, if not a lot. Uh, I'm not an appraiser. I have taken um, appraisal courses, same ones that the assessors uh, need to take. Um, you know, again, it's it's a it's a joint effort between the you know the town attorney, uh, the town supervisor, the town board, and the assessor when it comes to certs. Um, you know, small claims, similar. Um, you know, the two small claims that we've had that, you know, were filed, uh, both parties uh, submitted appraisals, looked over the appraisals. Um, I think we're, you know, close to coming to an agreement as far as that goes. But, um, yeah, you, you know, you need to uh, be able to look at an appraisal and um, make sure that the comps that are used are not really off the wall. Um, most appraisals, you know, I have to say, are done by professional appraisers. Um, they're pretty good. Um, unless I see something that's really out of whack, uh, probably use that appraisal. Uh, could but you, you need tell some us familiarity. Um, what you're doing to um, address the 105 equalization? Because that's one of the reasons I had you here tonight, but as right. long as you're up there. <laughs> right, okay. Well, um, I did manage to contact um, our CRM. Our CRM is our customer relationship manager uh, from the State Office of Real Property Tax Services. Uh, she is actually the one who ultimately will set our equalization rate. So um, she has agreed to work with me as she does with many assessors in Dutchess County because I believe <coughs> she's, she's been assigned to Dutchess County. Um, and she's... Um, you know, working with me as to what steps we need to take from here on in to um, address certain areas of the assessment role to see what needs to be changed um, and hopefully, you know, get our equalization rate back to 100%. Uh, initially, she had mentioned um, that we should focus our efforts on data collection. I'm not entirely convinced that we need to do that. Um, I think our data is actually pretty good. Um, I know that our um, clerk, Donna Morrison, has worked here for quite a while, and she's been a great help. Um, it, also, there were about 40 properties that Katherine Johnson had uh, valued. There was a bit of a backlog, I guess, in properties that needed valuation. And she did send our data collector out to check the inventory on those properties. And there were really very few changes that needed to be made. So I think that was a pretty good sampling. Uh, I think our data is okay. I think that the, um, you know, to take on a, d a data collection project for the entire town is a huge undertaking. It's a very uh, labor intensive part of any reassessment uh, project. So, um, so I don't really think that needs to be done. I think if we uh, continue to send our data collection, collector out and uh, check the data on all the sales, new construction, um, you know, our certs, our small claims, like any, any property that needs to be reviewed, if we keep up with that inventory, then we should be in pretty good shape. Um, 
course, you know, that can be addressed in the future also. Um, can you address the fact that um, some people are concerned that a, um, a resident assessor, one who lives in the town of Amenia and was elected, who kn knows all the town, all the people and the houses that they live in and all of that, why uh, an independent person coming in without any preconceived notions of how much they can afford to pay or how fancy their house is or how many bathrooms they may have or whatever, how an independent person might be a prefer preferable or vice versa to someone who knows the town well, grew up here, has yeah. childhood friends here. Right. Well, um, and enemies. If, if you're objective about an assessment, then it shouldn't matter whether you're, you know, you live in the town or you don't. Uh, assessments are really based on facts as far as sale information, uh, pretty much on sale information, cost information, you know, that sort of thing. So um, it should really be f objective. I agree. Okay. And you don't own any property here in Amenia, so you would not be assessing your own commercial business no. or your own home. No. Okay. It's very helpful. Yeah. Thank you very much. I, I understand the dilemma we're in. Um, I want to see the best for the town also. Um, I don't think your credentials are in question here or anything like that. Um, so again, I, I want to see the best for the town. Now, the, the dilemma that I'm having is the best for the town, the credentials, or is it the passion, the 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 love for the town. Um, actually, I just want to make sure you understand that um, the purpose of passing the local law is to put one, uh, the choice so that people have a choice on the, you know, in at non-November fourth for the referendum. Yeah, no, I mean everybody else had their say, so I just wanted to kind of. No, 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 that's you know, all right. I just want to make opinion. sure you understand. No, that. no, I understand that. Okay. You, you know, just. The, the, the dilemma that I'm having, I mean, my mind was made up, you know, before listening to everybody. And I mean, a lot of good points were brought up. And I do, you know, I, I do see both ends. And um, it's just, again, you know, I, I'm a firm believer in our town and we should be governing our town. and. I, I want to take our town back. I mean, who knows our town better than the residents? And again, not saying anything against Kathleen or, you know, it's just, it's a crossroad that I'm at and I want to have the best for the position also. So just, just a little thought I have. Is there any other public comment? Victoria, hold on to your hat. I wanted to thank you for letting everybody speak so much. This is such an important issue that people get up here two or three times, which normally doesn't happen. So thank you. And I didn't realize I was sitting right behind. I never met. Is it Mrs. Myers? Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you. Take it personally. We're just talking about the structure of our town. What a true professor is all that. Um, one other quick point for you guys to think about. If we then move to shared services, because I see that's on the agenda later for a different area of town government, but if we do move to shared services, that even diminish our democracy more? I mean, what if we share it with Millerton Northeast and we want to get rid of the person and they don't? I mean, how would, there would be such a morass of contracts. And just well, another thing to think about if this law gets adopted after November 4th, because I think the resolution will pass tonight. Thank you so much. Okay. Is there any other public comment? Make a motion to close. I have a comment. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. I just want to be clear that Kathleen is our temporary sole assessor appointed right now, um, doing the work of the assessor <coughs> position. Kathleen is not running against Uver Wayne Uvard, so um, whichever way you were to vote on what will soon be passed, I'm sure. Um, voting for or against that does not guarantee us Kathleen for life. 
um, even though it sounds like it may guarantee her till 2019, um, but it would be getting rid of your right to vote for an assessor in the future. But she is not running for office. Although she's welcome to move to our lovely town, mm -hmm. purchase property here, and assess it, <laughs> and run for office. To make a motion to close the public hearing. <coughs> For Second it so. after much thought. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? To make a motion to return to regular meeting. I'll second that again after quite a bit of thought on my part. <laughs> okay. I make a motion that the town board determine that local law number three appointment of sole appointed assessor is not an action within the purview of seeker. I'll second it. Councilman Delango? Yes. Councilman Hitzelberger? Yes. Councilman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Prodi? Yes. And Supervisor Prodi? Yes. Resolution number 36? Mm -hmm of 2014. Adoption by the Town Board of the Town of Amenia of Local Law Number 3 of 2014 entitled A Local Law Providing for the Appointment of a Sole Point of Assessor Pursuant to Article 3 of the Real Property Tax Law. Whereas the resolution was duly adopted on August 14, 2014 by the Town Board of the Town of Amenia introducing Local Law Number 3 of 2014 entitled A Local Law Providing for the Appointment of a sole point of assessor pursuant to Article 3 of the Real Property Tax Law, and for a public hearing to be held by the Town Board at Town Hall 4988 Route 22, Omenia, New York, at 7 p.m. on August 28, 2014, to hear all interested parties in said proposed local law number three, whereas notice of said public hearing was duly advertised in the Millerton <coughs> News, the official newspaper of the Town of Omenia, on August 14, 15. 15 and posted on the town clerk sign board on August 15th, August 15th, 2014. And whereas said public hearing was duly held at town hall at 7 p.m. on August 28, 2014, and all parties in attendance were permitted an opportunity to speak on behalf of or in, a po in opposition to said proposed local law or any part thereof, whereas pursuant to Part 617 of the Implementing Regulations pertaining to Article 8 State Environmental Quality Review Act has been determined <coughs> by the Town Board that adoption of the proposed local law does not constitute an action as defined and could be considered without further regard to seeker, whereas the Town Board, after due deliberation, finds it in the best interest of the Town to adopt such local law. Now, therefore, the Town Board hereby adopts said local law is local law number three of 2014 entitled a local law providing for the appointment of a sole appointed assessor pursuant to article three of the real property tax law a copy of which is attached here to and made a part hereof and the town clerk b and she hereby is directed to enter said local law in the minutes of this meeting and to enter said local law in the local law book of the town and to give due notice of the adoption of said local law to and to file said local law with the New York Secretary of State. The foregoing resolution was voted upon with all councilwomen and councilmen voting as follows. And I make that motion. I'll second that. Discussion. I truly believe this is absolutely, without a doubt, the wrong thing to be doing. And I think that even though the state law would allow us to just go ahead and, and pass through without having a referendum. Um, and, and we are putting it on the ballot in November. I think that the timing is very poor, that the discussion that was not had um, was done, I mean, that was just done in poor taste. The whole thing is just, it's repulsive. 
and and I, I really truly wish that the board would just all change your minds and say no. Any other discussion? I laud the opportunity for the taxpayers to think about this subject. It's not complicated. It's not that hard for us to understand. Do you want your uh, your uh, assessor to live in the town of Amini? Is that important to you? Do you want to be able to elect them? Um, or is it something that you think we should get a wider uh, range of expertise and hire the very best uh, candidate that we can find and leave that to the board, whoever it might be, who's elected every two years. There's a cycle of new people coming on. I laud it to Victoria Perotti and the, the four of us who voted yes to go ahead with this um, and allow the voters to make up their own minds. You're smart people out there. Make up your own minds. Don't let rhetoric or heavy posturing or anything. Just understand the facts that are before you. And I know that the town of Amenia will tell us what they prefer. And I always appreciate having the opportunity to put it on the ballot and let the voters themselves decide. Can't be any harm in allowing a voter to make their own decision at the, at the ballot. Is there any other discussion? Roll, please. Supervisor Brody? Yes. Councilwoman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Hitzelberger? No. Councilman Crody? Yes. <coughs> Councilman Delango? No. Public comment? Wayne Uvard. Okay, brand new world. Um, thank you very much, Wayne Uvard. Uh, are you all familiar with Jake Brakes? Mm -hmm. Jake Brakes, yes? Yes. Um, it seems to me, I don't know if it's now that I'm not going to a lot of meetings at night from being on the town board or I'm retired and home more. Uh, it certainly seems like they're getting louder and louder. Obviously, I live right on 22. I've talked to some of my neighbors. They all kind of agree. Um, I was driving up northern New York uh, earlier this year. I went through a few towns going toward Watertown. They actually, I saw some postings for town ordinances um, m making Jake Brakes illegal. Again, it might be one of these laws where how do you enforce it, but I think if there was something on the books, and I think this is something that should be researched, um, I don't know by who, the town board. Um, I've talked to both, you know, people live on any hill at, coming into any hamlet. Uh, they seem to be using, and I know truckers have a, they're having a tough time making a living with the price of diesel fuel and everything else, but uh, these Jake brakes seem to be just getting more annoying and more annoying, especially in the summertime, your windows are open. They're coming down 22 at 4 o'clock in the morning, 4.30. So I would respectfully uh, request that the board maybe look into this uh, as a possible ordinance or at least go in that direction for me. Thank you very much. Is there any other public comment? Kevin, yes. Kevin please. Um, I guess now that it's passed, I can bring it up as a town board issue. I forgot to mention one thing um, I, I wish I had. I wasn't prepared, it's my fault, it was on the website, for the first, um, what do you call it? I'm blanking out. The first um, public, public, public hearing, hearing, thank you, about the, um, the town law. I wish you guys had included sidewalks too. Um, as strange as it sounds, most of our Section 8 housing and our, and our low-income housing is downtown, and you cannot walk from low-income housing areas to the only food source in town, which you had even expanded. I think Reds was just making a technical issue between changes or not, but because the town, for the last 20 years, the town's never limited themselves to just housing as the, what we were going to get from Silo Ridge out of, out of this, and, and you included water and sewer, but I think that was even too narrow. Um, but what's the point of having low-income housing if they can't get to their only food source? So we'll house them, but, you know, you know, get hit by a truck on 22 as you try to, and people walk on the north side and on the west side of 22 up to Freshtown all the time. There's only like 18 inches of space. I've seen mothers push carriages, which really scares me. One person takes their eye off the road for a second or swerves. Um, so anyway, I wanted to add that about the first public hearing resolution. 
Um, and that's it. Thank you very much. Oh, um, can I get a point? I just can I just update Vicky on something because I see Vicky here and I didn't have the uh, oh, enhancement please do it committee after on. The meeting. Okay. Right. Sit down. The right too. Mike. Michael Collins, Amenia. I understand that at least two members of this board signed a petition to allow a private commercial business to keep their non-compliance signage while the supervisor quietly pursued non-compliance charges regarding a blank billboard and doesn't seem to consider bending the rules for a nonprofit that has been beneficial to an entire community. Why do you people believe you can have it both ways? Amenia has had its share of controversial, ineffective, and inept town boards, and the current town board, in my opinion, is by far the worst. Mike? Again, you made inaccurate and ridiculous comments at the end of the last board meeting, and I implore you to watch yourself. You stated, if one building affects your quality of life, there are other issues besides that building. That statement, as spoken, doesn't make any sense, but I understand what you tried to say. What I can't understand is the fact that you cannot comprehend something so simple. I will explain it for you again. First of all, there is more than one building that affects our quality of life. There have been several over the years. There are apartments where the tenants leave their discarded items near the sidewalks where it remains for weeks. There's buildings with drug activity. Remember, we planted a tree next to the discarded love seat. Planting a tree did not disrupt the drug activity, but on a positive note, it did obstruct the view of the love seat. But you see, Mike, there is a difference between these buildings and the one co-owned by planning board member Tony Robustelli. If any of these other landlords were helping making decisions regarding other people's property, it would be fundamentally wrong, and I would be here to tell you so. You also said, to me, that is someone not willing to help this town. I recently donated about five hours of my time right here in this town, Mike, and I would be willing to bet that I've donated more of my time over the years than you have. Before you shoot from the lip, load some facts. You said, put this energy into making things better instead of causing trouble. I say, put some energy into making yourself a competent councilman. I've never came here to cause trouble. For years, I have approached various town boards with concerns about legitimate issues, like my recent concerns they have, for the most part, been ignored. You stated people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones, and that's what it comes down to. There are violations that he had, but no one talks about it. I am willing to talk about it. That was a foot-in-the-mouth analogy if you simply look at the facts. I would be happy to compare notes with you regarding our very short list of violations and the very long list of repeated violations no-shows for inspections, repeated requests in 2010 for payment for an inspection done in 2006. I could bury you in facts, Mike. Take a look at the facts before you embarrass yourself. Is there any other public comment? I would like to thank you for uh, educating me. Um, you welcome. do have the facts. I would love for you to give me the facts. Um, like I said to you out in the I'm hall, you with facts for I never received any facts. So I'm asking you, like a man, to sit down and talk with me instead of just attacking people and then walking away. I am willing to work with Mr. Ch uh, what's his name? Um, Mr. Collins, there you go, <laughs> to, you know, make this town better. Ex excuse, all right, all right. Maybe what? That's enough. Leave. You're done. I'm done. You're done. Goodbye. Mike, Leave. You know, Leave. Th this is what the town doesn't need. Y you know, exactly. this is what we don't need is right. He, he has a lot of good points and he has a lot of valid issues, but we have to have a dialect and we have to have communication open to solve this. And I I'm sorry. Okay, Tom. <laughs> Thank you, Tom Warner and Mania. We have uh, two members on the Affordable Housing Committee, and both of them agree with your vote. They wanted to accept the offer 
of the 11 at 25. The only thing that I have exception with is why is it only limited to the use of downtown Armenia? Nobody else has water except downtown Armenia. It isn't just... If I may, Tom, uh, it's for Armenia and Wasaic. It's, it, it says it's for Armenia and Wasaic, so it's just not for, you know, Armenia Union, South Armenia. If I heard you correctly, it could only be used for sewer or water. No, it didn't. No, it can be used for anything. Okay. Sewer, uh, water, I'm, housing. I didn't understand. No, it. If you can be used for anything. If you'd like to see a copy of it, you can go to the town clerk's office and read it. I don't want to stir up it. You've got no, enough well, static tonight <laughs> like it is. It doesn't matter. If you're not sure what it says, go look at it and read it. Okay, thank you. Is there any other public comment? I just have a question. Did the man get the permission to put the sign in Wasaik that we talked about last meeting for 20 minutes? Could you say your name for the record? Uh, Lawrence Buckley, Amenia. Uh, that's currently before the Zoning Board of Appeals. He was told to go back to the board that he's been to already. And, yes, uh, yes, but he's he's gone back with a different plan. Okay. Because so he's 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 working with them. Good, because coming into Minya, there's three signs much bigger than the one he wants. That way, that way, and an ice cream cone at Fudgies. There's three signs much bigger than the one he wants. Thank you. Okay. Is there other any other public comment? Town clerk report. I'd like to say good evening. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I'd like to take the opportunity to congratulate all of our young friends who participated at the Dutchess County Fair this past week. Uh, we should be very proud of a small town of Amina. Coons Farm did excellent. Prospect Pig did excellent. All of the boys and girls who showed their animals, their, um, their pictures, their baking, they've put a lot of time in this year and they should all be very proud of themselves. And as we talk about our young friends, I'd like to remind everyone that September 4th, school reopens. So as Wayne talks about the tractor trailers, early morning, something you haven't seen for the past two and a half months, are school bus lights and children out by their bus stop. So please use caution when you're going to work and from work, especially as school reopens. Thank you. That it? That's it. Highway Department Report. <laughs> Award of Highway Material Bids. Yeah, last last uh, meeting we awarded some bids but well, there was a few things that we didn't receive bids on like the tree cutting our sweeping and concrete uh, we still didn't receive any bids for concrete so i guess if we have any concrete work we'll worry about it then but uh we had three bidders for the tree work uh, the lowest one was lee's tree service uh, i recommend we go with them and we only had one bid for the sweeping which was e easy street which I recommend we go with them. Can I make a motion that we accept the bids? Second. For Lee's Tree Service and Easy Street Cleaning. Second. Councilman Delango? Yes. Councilman Hitzelberger? Yes. Councilwoman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Prody? Yes. And Supervisor Prody? Yes. That's all I have. And uh, Shared Services Grant for Highway Equipment. Um, through the 2014 and 2016 Municipal Consolidation Shared Service Grant Program, there is available a million dollars. Um, Stan uh, and three other towns been going to meetings about this um, for its a Municipal Shared Highway Equipment Grant. The equipment are asphalt paver, a Leboy 8616 asphalt paver, and a CAT CC34 utility combi compactor, which is a blacktop roller, neither of which our highway department had. They should be in your packet. Oh. The grant request was $265,000. Milan, as lead applicant, submits the grant application with Amenia, Northeast, and Rhinebeck as co-applicants. The town of Milan has facilities to house the equipment. Equipment will be purchased through state contractor bid, whichever is less. The amount put in the grant is based on retail price, so will probably come in under budget. All four towns own a will own the equipment with a quarter share each, which includes insurance and maintenance. 
Mile and his lead agency would take out the insurance and each town would contribute 25%. A sharing schedule will be created via intermunicipal agreement pending favorable grant award that will include an agreement for repairs and routine maintenance expense chaired by the four towns. The shared service of the equipment will take place within a project projected road paving time frame that coincides with the asphalt plan operation schedules, generally open from April through October. Amenia has a 10 ton trailer, which will move one piece of equipment at a time. The projected savings to each town will be the difference of what you have spent. Um, currently, highway department rents this equipment when they have to use it. Yes. And what you will save by having the needed equipment available <coughs> to carry out road paving patching projects. The Amenia savings, uh, current paving equipment is rented. More blacktop can be purchased with savings accrued by sharing equipment. The paving is three quarters of a mile a year, patching three tenths of a mile a year. The outsourced cost is $12,000 a year. The anticipated savings is $9,000 a year, or 180,000 over 20 years. Um, we'll, they'll hear about the grant sometime in September. October. Or October. Right. Let's see whether or not we get it. What's your feeling on sharing the equipment? I'm not too crazy about it. Mm -hmm. Who applied for the else grant? Is. Milan. What's the downside, though? You could always rent if you were in a pinch and you needed it right away, and somebody else was using it. You would rent, right? Um, or I mean, that would always be an option. Right, right. So but they they set up the schedule themselves. Right. The four. I mean, the four high. Right, but I guess you can't always anticipate when he's going to absolutely need it, right? Or no, and there's going to be a lot involved. Like if our, Rhinebeck has it, we have to go to Rhinebeck pick it up. They're going to use our brand new trailer, mm -hmm. and uh, mm. we got to share the cost of repairing it. Now you can really tear that stuff up. It could get real expensive repairing them. Yeah. And uh, more than when, we, when when it's down at Tamina. You know, I'll be watching it, make sure it doesn't get abused, but once it's in Rhinebeck, Milan, or Millerton, who knows? So you went for this grant, but you don't think it's something that we should do? Well, everybody wants us to do shared services. So Who's everybody? The, the county. I'm governor. sorry? The governor. Governor. Uh, town board. The county. Taxpayers. County, taxpayers, yeah. Yeah, this is a county grant. Because it sounds yeah, like it's going to cost us a heck of a lot more. It may work out, but I don't know. Well, we might not even get it, but we'll see. Yeah. And that's one of the things the governor has for um, 2016. Not only do you have to stay under the cap, but you also have to show some cost savings somewhere. Yeah. Stanley, if, if we get this and, and you think it's not a good idea, can we get out of being part of it? I don't know. Once we buy it, we buy it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, if they say that the grants awarded, can we decline? No, you got to talk to Milan. They're, they're the lead agency. And if you thought it was a good idea to do so, I mean, you're the one who's saying that you don't think it's a good idea. You're saying we got a grant, gonna, we applied for a grant with Milan, but I don't think it's a good idea. So. I know it's going to be problems. With, with the paver, you know, you really got to do a lot of maintenance on them. No, I know, and I know how much maintenance you do on our equipment to right. keep it, you know, running for decades, whereas other towns don't. Well, we don't have a lot of repair bills in town, but this paver man and may end up costing us a lot of money. Who knows? Or maybe everything will go right. Everything will be okay. I don't know. I'd but you have, shake your head I, no I would, when I would you rather say have that. Our own. We'd rather have our own. That way we can maintain it and keep an eye on it. Okay, is that it? Is it? That's it. I have a question. Um, I've just been slowly watching our Welcome to a Wasik sign get w wigglier, and um, it's the little flower box is broken on the back side, and it needs a new paint. I think it's something either we put into the town budget or I know in the past you've been very helpful in getting our other signs that were repaired on the highway um, along Route 22, the big welcome to Amenia signs. Right. Is that something that you think you might be able to um, 
repair the back side of it and get it to stabilize and upright again. Which, which one are you talking about? It's as you go down Furnace Bank Road. Oh, that thing is shot. It is shot. Yeah, it's isn't all it? rotted. So do we need to get a new one like we did, um, rebuild it like we did for the other Welcome to Amelia right. signs? Yep. It's just a total redo. That's an old one down in the Furnace Bank, that's is very old. Is it older than the one on Old 22 and the one on um, Old 22 as it wraps around? We've got one by uh, Joe Casey's um, house. There's well, one across from there. They're all about the same age. They're all about the yeah. same age. But when so. you're talking about the flower basket even fell off it, right? It's, it's, it's a mess. It's a mess. It's embarrassing because it's as you go down into the hamlet, it's the first thing you see. And every time I drive by it, I think it's beyond what probably volunteers can do at this point. I was hoping a scout would take that on, but I think it's it's a big job, really. Yeah, we tacked it together a couple times, but the wood is, it's the wood is gone. Okay. Okay. Water district report. You all set, Stan? All set. All set. I'm all set. Okay. Water district report. Um, district. The water committee meeting was on August 13, 2014. We discussed the response from email received from attorney Denise Fitzpatrick regarding the draft of the Amenia Water District uh, laws sent to her. A date is being set up to continue the process of writing the laws. Their next meeting is scheduled for September 10, 2014, 5.30 p.m. at the town hall if anyone would like to attend. We don't have our grant report tonight. We'll have one at next meeting. Is there any other committee reports? I do have something about the building reports. Oh, okay. Um, the signs that were on the intersection uh, 343, 22, and Route 44 in front of cousin, you know, in front of four brothers. Um, John Fenton, the code enforcement officer, is in possession of those signs. Anybody who owns those signs has to go see John Fenton. Um, there was an issue not only with our town sign law, there was an issue with the DOT law also. Um, DOT is involved in it, and they just want the people to come pick up their signs. So they have to see John Fenton to get their sign. They have to give their name and their address and everything else. And Go from there. Mm -hmm. right. Out of curiosity, did you mention what the issue was? With DOT? Yeah. They were in the DOT right away. What is the DOT right away for the corner? 20, 50 feet from road to road, on, you know, from the whole Under. thing in the road. From, the center to from center to center line. 50 feet from center to yeah. center? So that was the issue. Not only was it an issue with our sign law, it was an issue with the DOT also. Are there any other committee reports? Do we have to take down the trees and stuff, like by Fountain Square? Nothing's been said about that. Yeah. The whole thing was with the signs right now. Is there any other committee? I have a, a report from the CAC. We had a meeting on August 20th, 2014, at 7 p.m. at the town hall. Uh, they talked about the washed aggregate cleanup, uh, Silo Ridge's most recent rainstorm, and the bonding that was um, uh, proposed by the town board and then passed. Um, Newtown Playground, they talked about where we are with that process and um, stormwater runoff. The fishing site that was proposed and not yet uh, completed, they have until October to work in that uh, trout stream down at the Wasaic Park for uh, fishing access. And the Borden Garden is looking very good down in Wasaic. It's, um, planted out with um, butterfly and bird friendly and native species of uh, the garden. So it's low maintenance, low impact, and looks great. It was a great year for that. And the 10 Mile River Group, um, there was a letter from the Housatonic Valley Association <coughs> that basically encapsulated much of our um, discussion that night, which was whether or not the town uh, town board should be um, pursuing the listing of the Tin Mile River as a New York State designated waterway. And my primary interest in following up as a town board member is that I've seen a lot of money go to Wappingers Falls, um, the Wappingers Creek watershed, 
They've gotten hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of money to help mitigate flooding. Flooding is a persistent and ongoing and increasing concern for the towns of Amenia and all in this 10 mile watershed. All we have to do is pass a, a resolution as Dover did. Katie Palmer House is, is uh, leading that uh, effort down in Dover. They passed it to uh, create a consortium for the 10 mile river watershed. So whatever we do, whatever improvements we do, improve the whole region. So, um, and watersheds need to be thought of as a watershed, not as ending at our town boundaries. So whatever we do to help improve stream flow, it's going to affect the towns down below, and we should all be working together. And what we need to do is pass a similar resolution uh, asking the state, the county legislators to ask the state to designate our 10 Mile River as a New York State designated waterway. It's done by state law, and after that we can get funding like the Wappingers Creek watershed to help with all the flooding that we have had on um, all kinds of different. We had flood events all this year that we've seen on the landfill. We've seen it affecting Silo Ridge. We, you know, they have a great uh, soil retention, uh, whatever you call that, the retention fences. And still, it's very, very hard to control the amount of rain that we get in a short pa uh, passage of time. So I am all for it. I don't see any downside to pursuing that. So I would recommend that we put on the agenda for our September and we go ahead and pass it. Dover's done the lead. We would be next, and if we can get Millerton, Northeast, and uh, Dover, and uh, Pauling, I think is, is the fifth group that would be in this. And we've worked historically together. We need to work together on these kind of issues as a consortium. I mean, Vicki, the only problem that I have is that resolution at Dover passed. It's so vague. It doesn't have anything spelt out in it. What, what are the pros? What are the cons? What okay. comes? What goes? Yeah, so I wanted more information. If, if we could okay. get more information on it, I mean, yeah. I think it would be a big help. Can I yeah. read what the uh, watershed manager for the Housatonic Valley uh, Association? It's um, Michael Jesterinsky. He's been hired for the water protection director for the Housatonic Valley Association. Um, and he has outlined the benefits, which I think could be incorporated into a resolution. If you have a few minutes, I know you don't want to go <laughs> to it, <laughs> but um, it, I'll just try and briefly summarize it. Some of the benefits of pursuing the listing of the Tin Mile River as a designated inland water body includes, well, first of all, it's uh, this inland water bodies and coastal waterways is a program of the New York State Department of State Division of Coastal Resource that would use federal protection funds, EPF funds, those are state funds, that every time you return your, you don't return your bottles with a d bottle deposit, that five cents goes into the EPF fund for environmental quality. This would help with water quality issues in Amenia. It would help with um, flooding. Those are the two main things that I think you could hang your hat on. This, this is what these grants would, would help us address. There is a growing interest among 10 Mile River watershed municipalities and other stakeholders in having the 10 Mile River listed on New York State's list of designated inland waterways. This designation will provide member communities with the following benefits. Communities located on that water body are eligible for funding through the EPF fund. Communities are eligible for technical assistance for a broad range of local projects under the Local Waterfront Revitalization Program, LWRP, administered by the New York State Department of the Division of Coastal Resources. The LWRP provides a community with a vision for their future and once adopted, allows grants to be submitted to implement the vision. These grants are available in a wide range of revitalization activities, including planning, design, feasibility studies, and construction projects or implementation of local LWRPs. Eligible communities can also use fu this funding to develop and implement watershed management plans to address watershed management issues such as flooding and water quality. In order to have a water body listed, the following steps need to be taken. We need to indicate that we're in favor of pursuing the designation, preferably by resolution by the executive board. The Senate and Assembly representatives of the municipalities that contain that water body need to be contacted and asked to prepare and present the bill. Uh, which is, needs to be signed into executive law and amended to, propose, to include the proposed water body within the definition of the designated inland water rates to the Senate and Assembly. The bill then has to be sent to the governor for his signature. There's about 19 watershed communities on it. We have to get listed in order to be able to apply for funding. All it does is say we'd like to be considered for, for, for funding in its short. For what? For 
uh, grants that would help improve uh, water quality, planning, uh, mitigation of flooding, those are the kind of grants that are eligible under the EPF funds. Thank you. I think we all got that, right? Victoria, did you send that around to everybody? Yeah, yeah. yeah, we got it this afternoon. We got the resolution from Dawn a while ago. Okay. I had Not that problems resolution. with the text of um, the Dover resolution as well. Well, we don't, we're not voting on it. Am I it's not even it's only? not even an agenda item right now you know it's it's under this committee, this was under committee yeah. Vicki was just talking about the the CAC report I mean you know you want to put it on the agenda for next the the 11th please do yeah we also um, we also are eligible for hazardous mitigation grants which we got a hundred and eleven thousand dollar one to fix Tower Hill to fix flooding problems so we there are other grants that that we're eligible for and we've had a, successfully applied for to um, take care of stormwater and flooding issues I think we have an awful lot of flooding issues all around us we've got private landowners you need to read the Poughkeepsie Journal and all just Google probably you can get it five hundred thousand dollars awarded to this community this uh, town Pleasant Valley, um, Millbrook, I think, Salt Point, uh, lots of different communities have areas that are um, not necessarily just roads, but you have properties that are flooded on a regular basis. Every time, you know, by the firehouse, that uh, sedimentation, I've had, had homeowners say, you know, it's getting shallower and shallower, and it takes less and less to create a flooding situation at those homes that are in the lower part in Wasik. We have chronic flooding. It's just a reality, and it's going to get worse. So I think you know, opening yourself up to funding opportunities to provide good planning to figure out what is the best strategy for Dover is is in the same boat as we are. Pun, pardon the pun, but uh, these communities need to work together to solve some of the issues and get some help. Are there any other committee reports? I just have a comment about this. There's only one. The only concern I have is um, if we uh, get ourselves involved with this, uh, what are the impacts on people's private property rights? That's my biggest concern, because you know it's all nice and good to pr protect uh, your property from flooding and opening yourself up to grants and all that. Uh, but I've known, I've noticed that uh, depending on the leaning of the organization, as far as um, Let's just say that uh, you know I'm all for protecting the environment, but at the same time, I don't want to violate people's private property rights. And so, I would like to have more information on that to alleviate any concerns that I have uh, that it would impact uh, negatively the property owners in the town of Amenia. So this Michael, who seems to be uh, the most have the most expertise. His name is Michael Jasteren, J-A-S. No, he'll come and talk to us so that all of the town of Amini can hear what the pros and cons are. Um, so if we put him on the agenda, I can contact him and ask him to come and give us a discussion and help. maybe he'll help us reformat that um, proposal, that um, <coughs> resolution to be more fact, more fact oriented for Amini. Are there any other committee reports? Standard workday resolution. The standard workday and reporting resolution for elected and appointed officials. Does this have to have a number? No, we're redoing it because they wanted the, the numbers that follow the decimal. So okay, so we're just redoing we're one just that redoing we already did. That shows the record activity results. Okay, be it resolved that the town of Amenia hereby establishes the following standard work days for these titles and will report the officials to the New York State and local retirement system based on timekeeping system records or the record of activities. Can I make that motion? Second. Councilman Delango? Yes. Councilwoman Hitzelberger? Yes. Councilwoman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Prody? Yes. And Supervisor Prody? Yes. Uh, discussion and approval of the Silo Ridge Bond for reclamation of the golf course. It's been signed, um, and the copies have gone to um, 
silo ridge for signage and as soon as they sign it they will be sending I mean, you a check for eighty thousand dollars we're checking with the controller's office to see if we what type of account that you know that we have to put this money in right the, the agreement on today that the planning board attorney and he's going to coordinate with the other signature pages of the other parties so that went yesterday Yeah, we have to establish a public hearing for the community development block grant. Which will be September 11th. I, I, I have a, a problem with that particular day, um, considering what happened uh, in 13 years ago. Well, we're still having it. Are we changing it? I know that's a regular board meeting, but considering that it is September 11th, and I don't know how other board members feel about this, but I kind of think. Well, we can we can do we could do a moment of silence or more than that if you want to recognize so many Americans that lost their life on that day. If that would make you more comfortable. Resolution. Thirty-seven. I would ask that the, the board meeting not take place on September 11th. I don't think it should. I make a motion that the board meeting not take place on September 11th, 2014. Do you have an alternate date? 10th, 12th. Can we schedule it on a Tuesday? 9th. 10th is open for me, and the 9th is open for me. Okay. Okay, so Tuesday would be fine for me. Stephen, the 9th. Because I'm taking an EMT class on Mondays and Wednesdays. Tuesday, the 9th. Okay. You won't have me. Oh, that's a problem. It wouldn't be televised. What day are you available, Mike? In that week? Thursdays? <laughs> How about the 18th? The 18th depends on the planning board. They've been very active. What's your availability, Mike? I, I mean, it's got to be televised. It's only Thursdays for him. Planning board isn't going through. I do understand Steve's point about 9 11. Wednesday, but I mean, we, we could say a moment of silence, you, you, you know, respect that way. We could recognize the day. We could recognize the day. I mean, banks are open, post office are open. It's. You know, and I, I don't want to be disrespectful. We can't do that unless the governor tells us we can. I think it's important to have the meetings televised, personally. Okay. So we'll have the meeting on the 11th. Is there a motion on the floor? There's a motion. It was not seconded. So the motion is to not have the meeting on the 11th, is that correct? Yes. Bridget? So we're going to have it on the 11th. Resolution number 37, the resolution authorizing publication of a legal notice regarding a public hearing concerning the 2015 Dutchess County Community Development Block Grant Program. Whereas the town of Amini, New York is participating in the Dutchess County Community Development Consortium for fiscal year 2015, whereas the town board is required to seek input from citizens and groups during a public hearing prior to submission of an application, whereas the CDBG application is due on October 17, 2014. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town board, the town of Amini, hereby authorizing a legal notice regarding the CDBG program to be advertised in the town's official newspaper, the Miller to News, and in the Poughkeepsie Journal prior to the September 11, 2014 town board meeting. I make that motion. I second that. Discussion? 
Roll, please. Councilman Lango? Yes. Councilman Hetzelberger? Yes. Councilwoman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Prodi? Uh, no. And Supervisor Prodi? Yes. Okay, hey, town hall, parking lot, and driveway safety and signage issues. Um, I met um, on Monday with Chuck Walters from the DOT, Sam Whitehead, and John Fenton regarding um, some problems we have with um, safety issues coming in and out of the parking lot. Uh, so I know um, some of the bus drivers have had problems seeing around the trees and also with problems with um, cars coming in and out of the uh, parking lot. So one of the suggestions that was made by Chuck Walters from DOT that we have uh, double-sided one-way signs coming in and out of um, the, park, uh, the parking lot and also the town hall. Uh, John Fenton will get the permit from DOT and Sam will order and install the signs to improve the signage going in and out. Uh, the other problem are the trees in front of the parking lot. Um, I guess over the years they've been trimmed back quite a bit so that the bus drivers could see around them. Um, the DOT is recommending removing them because they uh, cause a sight dis distance problem coming in and out of the parking lot. Um, the two options that um, I've talked to a few arborists about are digging them up and replanting them alongside the parking lot, which is an expensive proposition. It's done with a special spade and might cost anywhere upwards of $2,500. And then we don't know once we've moved them if they'll live or cutting them down altogether. So it's up to the board what they want to do with those trees. And the other thing was to trim the crab apple trees that are <coughs> right in um, right on the front lawn. One in the middle looks like it's dying. If you, I don't know if you just want to trim that and hope for the best and see if it lives. Um, and in addition to trimming the trees, this is beyond what Chuck Walter said. Um, I noticed when I was out there looking at the trees that there are vines um, on the large maple and the two pine trees that are going right up the center of it. And from what I understand, they can harm the trees, so the vines have to go with whatever else we decide to do. So it's up to, you know, I'm not sure what, what you want to do other than change the signage about the trees. I would like for, um, Ch this is Chuck Walters. Mm -hmm to email the board his recommendations in writing okay. as the next step prior to spending money or chopping down more trees. I'll mention that um, a citizen has come forward from when we removed the trees in uh, Fountain Square, um, the last three towards the earth your property that she would be happy to serve on a tree commission as we have in other towns that are Tree City USA designated cities to have like a citizen review. She was upset that there wasn't more citizen involvement. Um, so I don't know, I will just throw it out there because she was very, very upset and um, feels like there should be more of a process. And I know there are, is more of a process in other towns that have tree city de designations. They are required to have a tree commission. And I often see in uh, the town of Millbrook or village of Millbrook, they pass this through before the board. You know, they get a recommendation from the town highway superintendent and whoever else is heading up that commission. I know it's an extra layer, but it would, and it would slow the process down, but it would give us the sense that We've had due process. People have had a chance to weigh in who feel strongly about it. So I'll just throw it out there because she volunteered. She'd start tomorrow if, you know, looking into the pros and cons of tree removal before. I mean, I do understand that, but it is a safety issue. I use that parking lot. My daughter's school bus is there, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. twice a day. And three or four times a week, I pull out and have to step on my brakes because someone's right on me. Um, you know, it's, it's a catch-22. Not only is it the 
visibility. It's the people not obeying the speed limit through there. But, you know, again, I, I two, three times a week I pull out into the road and I have to stop short because a car is there. Oh, and just in alluding to the jake break uh, situation, I think this is all relative to that, um, especially after hours, um, a lot of those tractor trailers are speeding through town. Um, I mean, Steve, the problem we're going to have with the jake break is the jake break is there to slow the trucks down. And but they're also supposed to obey the speed limits, and I can tell you that those big container trucks, I've seen them early hours in the morning uh, going away 55 to 60 right to the light. And that needs to stop. Um, as far as uh, the, um, the, the site distance, I do agree with you. I think that we definitely need to be looking at, we need to look at uh, the alternatives as far as safety goes. Um, I'm also a proponent of, uh, we have that crosswalk there. Um, I think you can see that the, um, the crosswalk signs are being blocked by the tree that is uh, next to it and the leaves are blocking it. I believe that should be also considered in something like this because people are gonna be using that crosswalk to go work, go to the farmer's market or go to the town hall. Um, I would, <clears throat> I like I said before at the last meeting, I would encourage uh, the creation of one of those automatic triggers um, that we have, similar to what we have in Hashias, when it's a motion sensor, senses a person to turn the flashing, there should be flashers there, alerting people to slow down and to stop the crosswalk. And if we're gonna do this, we should, we should do it right. Okay, we're back to so whether we need to trim the crab apple trees, at least. <laughs> Vicki, um, I would like to get the person's name to talk about Natasha, forming this. Natasha, Margaret O'Brien and mm -hmm. I can give you her contact information. That would be great, because I think that's something that's necessary. And the We're spending grant on. money to put in trees, and then it's, it's like we're just like chopping them all down. What was the point of spending the money on something you're just going to chop down? You know, well, I think, I think there's a disregard for the, for, the, um, for the trees in our town, I on think our public trees areas. trees have a lifespan, so people, yes, they when do. you do it, you have a requirement that you maintain taxpayer dollar trees. You don't chop them down, I wouldn't think, within 10 years, but um, they do have a lifespan, so we will have to change. And I mean, but unfortunately, I rather lose have a, a tree safety issue than, than lose life. a life. I so, I mean, that's what it comes down with my thing. So, uh, we could use Lee's trees to, you know, they have an arborist, I understand, on their Yeah, staff. they got the bid to trim the crab apple trees and get the, uh, if, we don't, if we don't take the vines out of the pine trees and the, and the maple tree, they're going to die. The vines need to come out. And so we need to do this maintenance. Yeah, and the trim the crab apple trees. I mean, I can get, you know, their price for that. Well, definitely and then you can decide what you want to do with the other trees, but there are three safety issues. So you decide whether, you know, you want to move them, you want to trim them, or you want to cut them down. You know, it's up to you. But something has to be done with them. They can't stay the way they are now. Well, I think the first step is getting Mr. Walters. Well, I'll have him send his recommendations, recommendations in writing to the whole board so we can all see them and contemplate that. It's not like we can... Uh, do the tree trimming right now anyway. Okay. 2015 budget department head meetings. We need to set up some meetings. Any suggestions? Happen during the standard town board meetings. Excuse me? Have them during the standard town board times. That's my suggestion. I think we'd be here till three o'clock. I don't morning. think so. We're not doing that. Um, Thank you for considering it so politely. But I mean, how would you 
do that it we're here till it's 9 30 and we're not done with the agenda yet so pretty close i don't think there's time in a typical meeting to consider the budget as well and start at seven o'clock we only have two town board meetings three we have two town board meetings in September scheduled. Well, there'll be a special one. There's been one every month but January, I think. Could we do it on a Saturday or something? Well, then you have to have the department heads come in on a Saturday or Sunday. And um, they wouldn't be able to do that? Why don't we just uh, schedule them before the regular meeting starts, like, like five or something? Usually, uh, uh, those those committees when they meet, that's usually a regular time. So either that. Well, or as you know, I'm not available until 7:30. On a, on, I work full time, so. But you know that. So when are you? So you're available. After at 7:30 or later yeah. on weekdays. Yeah. Okay. So why not? Uh, so it'll be ready the first week of September. Is that right, Victoria? Or are we looking to meet? You know, that the, the second week of September looks pretty open to me, other than the town board meeting. And Friday it doesn't. Well, the look submission good. of estimates is no later than 9:20. The filing of the tentative budget has to be 9:30. Okay, so, so we need we to have time to look at everything and why don't we decide do what to put one of, in the budget. Why don't we do it on Tuesday the night? Sounds good. He doesn't necessarily need to be here to, to broadcast it, to, no. to videotape it. No, 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 no. No. Uh, people can come at their leisure if they want to come in and sit with one of our budget meetings. We do want people <coughs> to come and see government in action. The 9th is open for me. The 10th is open. You have a meeting on the 10th, don't you? A yep. class? Oh, right. So the 9th is open. The 15th and 16th is open for me and the 17th. I mean, the third week of September looks pretty open. So what about the 9th and the 16th? Can't do the 16th. That's a court date. Unless we're doing it at court. Budget meeting on the 9th at 7.30. You okay, Gretchen, uh, 9th on uh, 7.30? That works for me. Does it work for you, Mike? It looks, it looks fine for me at 7.30, yeah. But as I think Vicki pointed out, that that's not enough time? 7.30? Yeah, if we don't have the town board meeting. I'm just saying 7.30 till... Well, we'll be doing yeah. several department heads. We won't just be doing one. I don't have the schedule. So it is enough time? Yeah, it's just when you try and add it to a t regular town board meeting, we would run out of time unless we. So is September 9th at 7:30 acceptable to all members? Yes. Is there another time? The 15th is open for me, Monday the 15th. Is this an alternate to the 9th, no, or in, no, addition in addition to? In addition to. You. So. You I didn't hear from all everybody if it was okay because, you know. The last meeting we had, <coughs> only two of us showed up on time. <coughs> so this is the 9th at 7.30? So I want to make and sure that... And the 15th at 7.30? Is we'll that what we're there. looking at? Promise? So yeah. Promise? Okay. <laughs> what's the second here? one? Absolutely. The 15th. You wouldn't be able to do that? No, I'm not going to be there for the 15th. Okay. He has a class. What about the 16th? What about the 18th? I can oh, do, court date, sorry. I can do the 18th. 18th sounds fine. 18th is not possible. Okay. Isn't there, um, th there's big public hearings coming up on It's on the 4th. Yeah. That's on the 4th? Yes, yeah. in the auditorium, 7 o'clock. <coughs> the 16th wasn't possible that Tuesday? It's prosecutor night. It's court date. I'm sorry? It's a court date. So I'll be there. Well, can Nancy fill in? I can ask her. <coughs> You're going to have to schedule the departments accordingly. There's no justice, no town clerk, no. You just have to do me first. Oh. Then or switch it. For yeah, we'll just do you out. first. 
or we don't do minutes. On the 9th, anyway. right? We, we you're could, available on the 9th? Could still the look at the weekend, too. Okay. You got the, I mean, you're I mean we're asking them to staff. come in at 7.30 to 9 o'clock. I mean, hours? that's, <laughs> you know. So we used to do it during, earlier during the day when they were here. <coughs> have to pay them. So the 16th, then? Is the 16th? That's fine with me. Oh, if you you're, get, you're really good at taking them. What? 16? I don't think I'm hmm? allowed to. 7.30? In a pinch. I mean, if I'm, I really shouldn't be. Don, we'll just give you an audio copy of it. He's not here. It's your No, I mean, if you need notes, we can just give you well, an audio copy. Well, you're going to see if Nancy can do it, right? Oh, they're not approved minutes, are they? Are they just notes? It's just going to be an open and a close because it's just going to be discussion of the 2015 budget. That... I pretty much just wrote your minutes for you. I just need to know who opened and who closed. Okay. Yeah. So we have the 9th and the 16th at 7.30? Yep. Okay. It, it's just informational. If it's informational, I can do it. If it's yeah, voting, I really shouldn't be. Okay. So the 9th and the 16th. Mm-hmm. She just moves to open it and whoever moves to close it. Yeah. Because there's no voting for opening okay. and closing. Okay. Public comment? Or, and is there any other matters anybody wants to bring up? Helen O'Connell, I mean, yeah. I just want to ask you a question. Excuse me, could you speak up, please? Um, I just want to ask you a question about the budget meeting. When it's uh, time for recreation, will you give us that time so we can be here? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Everybody will be notified as okay. soon as I have the dates. Yeah, all right, that's all I want to know. Thank you. Okay. Any other public comment? Yes, go ahead, Roseanne. Didn't see you back there. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to um, agree with something that Stephen said. You know, I really do think that something should be done about those trucks that come through town, especially in the morning. Um, especially even if you can, uh, at the beginning of the school year, when the bus, uh, all the time, but especially um, next week when school's starting, because they fly through town. Um, it, it's awful. And I do think that the blinking lights at the crossing thing is a really good idea, because that may slow them down as well. Um, and the other comment um, I would like to make is um, with the program for the um, watersheds. Um, I also think that there should be some information if, if maybe someone who's gone through the process, if we could see what they've done, because my big concern would be what impact it has on the environment, because I've seen too many bodies of water that have been ruined because um, people um, are foolish enough to build on bodies of water. If you build on a body of water, you buy a house on a body of water, you know, it, it just, you, you know that at some point you're going to get flooded. So, um, but especially up north, I've seen lakes just ruined um, because they've done things to try to avoid flooding or, or you know, um, change the course of something. So I would like to actually, you know, not some legal jargon. I would like to see what they've actually done mm -hmm. in other places and know what kind of impact it's really going to have on the course of the Ten Mile River, um, and if they, you know, what kind of things they plan on, or, or what kinds of things that they would do, um, too. What kinds of projects? So I, I'll just say what I had read in the Poughkeepsie Journal, and so I, I haven't talked directly to um, officials, but I was just following what they were doing, and a typical thing would be an area that reminded me a little of Wasik, where um, like a beaver had uh, added some debris, and the water was no longer flowing through the channel appropriately. They were given a, uh, one in one instance where there was perennial flooding across the road and onto people's property. They were allowed to go in and you know do the proper cleaning of the stream. But it doesn't. It, I agree, you can cause more problems by over engineering something that makes now the water go down and flood somewhere else. So it has to be done, like I said, in a in a carefully planned way. And I agree. There's. Dover had some issues with over cleaning out so that it became, uh, I don't know, you know, it's, it's a tricky situation and whatever you do affects your neighbors downstream. So um, I can try and ask this Michael to provide some information and maybe also look for newspaper articles about the, the information that I read and talk to officials in the Wappingers Creek area 
and then Katie Palmer House is, is much more fluent in this information as well. And then the soil and water. And uh, actually I know her and I'll Cornell. contact her. She's in, yeah. she's in my she's book club. Very helpful. Yeah, talking to her is good. And the Dutchess County Soil and Water, Brian Skorlick. Skorlick. Skorlick is very good and very um, helpful. And you would be a part of this kind of planning and overall management issues where we're not doing something that was unintended. Yep. Is there any other public comment? Town board comments? I'm gonna go ahead and start. Um, there was a notice that came out from Cornell Cooperative today that um, t they found tomato blight in Dutchess County. Um, I'm just trying to find the actual notice here to read it to you. Late blight. Um, if you think that you have late blight, which is where your tomato plants suddenly turn brown as well as much of the fruit, um, you can confirm it with Cornell Cooperative. If you have it, immediately remove your plants and fruit and throw them into the garbage. If not, compost them. Not, do not compost them um, or till them under because the fungus will not survive a freeze. This fungus spreads very quickly and over many miles. Um, this will destroy your home garden crop for sure, um, but if you do not uh, take care of it, it's gonna um, destroy the commercial crops as well in our area. So if you have late blight, which you'll find on your tomato plants, it's really very important for agriculture in our area for you to take care of your vegetable garden so you don't, you know, kill all the tomatoes everywhere and in, in, in our area. Um, so I just wanted to mention that. Any other town board comment? I have been inundated with a lot of um, concern, um, and I'll read my latest letter that just arrived in my email before I, I came. Vicki, the planning board just in the past 24 hours put up a notice on aminianewyork.gov, our town website, for a public hearing for the revised Silo Ridge application to be held Thursday, September 4th at 7 p.m. I thought that they had to give at least 14 days notice of a public hearing. Furthermore, any written comments from those not present are due prior to the hearing, exclamation mark. This gives little time to prepare written comments for, from those who cannot attend. If I am correct that there is a requirement for min a minimum of 14 days notice, could the town board please look into canceling this hearing and having it rescheduled for a future Saturday when more concerned residents can attend? I would most appreciate if you could follow up on this matter. Thanks, regards, Laurence Levin. Um, I promised her I would read that. Um, it mirrors uh, other concerns that I have heard um, also expressed at the CAC uh, meeting um, a week or so ago, 10 days ago. And basically what I did is go onto the website to see if I could find the documents and the information that um, was would be available for the citizen who wanted to weigh in on the public hearing. It's um, and there was, in fact, thank you, Gretchen. I think uh, or somebody put right up on the very beginning of the uh, when you get onto the town website under announcements. It now says Town of Amenia Planning Board notice of public hearing. Please take notice that the applicant is. Um, the owners of the property, blah, 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 blah. It talks about the amended special permit master development plan approval of the resort community pursuant to code 121-18C3. Uh, uh, it goes through all the approvals, the, the special permit approvals for a golf maintenance facility, golf course improvements to be located on parcel grid number 706600870350 in the OC zoning district. Uh, site plan approval for the first phase of the development of the resort community, including a golf maintenance facility and golf course improvements to be located on parcel grid number 7066 uh, They're getting, uh, the public hearing is on preliminary subdivision approval, special permit approval for a storage at the golf maintenance facility of more than 500 pounds of fertilizer and pesticides slash herbicides in connection with the applications 
The applicant has also requested the following waivers from the Planning Board of the Town of Amenia, waivers uh, regarding the minimum required buildable area and maximum slope of buildable area and flag lots, waivers of uh, the town code, including the intersection angle and grade, maximum number of lots assessed and cul-de-sac road, maximum length and grade of a cul-de-sac road, uh, minimum road pavement width, et cetera, et cetera, waivers, um, of the town code regarding private gated roads, gated roads and permanent cul-de-sac roads, waivers uh, regarding the minimum width of green buffer, waiver of uh, minimum width of buffer from any existing residential use not within the RDO district. Um, it, it has quite a bit of information, but at the end of the day, when you um, finish reading that, you don't know where the documents are, at least I could not find them. Others could not find them, but Gretchen will put a link so that when you go to the town website, the very first front page in the announcement, you read the public hearing, she's going to add a very specific link right there. Yeah, because um, right now when you go, you have to click on government planning board and then scroll down to the bottom of the page there underneath the planning board contact information, underneath the copy of the public notice. Down at the bottom, there's a section that says Silo Ridge Resort Community Information, and it has every single piece of information related to the planning board application and process there. There's a link you can click there, and you'll get right to it. But so, you're going to put that up on the very But I'll put an extra link extra on the front page for you. So you don't you. have to follow all those links. So you don't have to click on right. government planning board and scroll to the bottom. That would be great. And the stormwater prevention plan, that, there's a lot of concern that we just didn't have it in time. Um, wasn't at the library, wasn't available at the CAC meeting, so I'm not sure if it's on that stormwater prevention uh, It's at plan. the library now. Is it? So did they meet their 14 days is the concern that has been expressed to me for over the last 15 days. So that's, I'm just bringing that to your attention. Those are the concerns that have been brought to me. Um, I will forward this to Norm Fontaine and just make him aware that people have had a difficult time getting themselves up to speed because September 4th is right around the corner. And it's a lot of documents to read over if you want to comment on all of these waivers and approvals. That's it. Any other town board comment? See the other thing? No. Nope. No, I think I'm going to keep quiet tonight because I was told, you know, earlier in the meeting that I put my foot in the mouth, okay. um, and I don't want to add to anybody else's issues, so I'll uh, pass tonight. Okay. Uh, supervisor's report. Uh, I just want to announce that the Weavetuck Central School District and the Council on Addiction Prevention and Education of Dutchess County will, um, is inviting the public to a community forum concerning the alarming rise of substance abuse within the county. This event will be held on Wednesday, September 3rd at 5.30 p.m. in the Weebatuck High School Auditorium on 94 Hate Road, Amenia. Speakers will discuss the nature of the problem, what is being done to combat this issue, and what role each person can play in the reduction of substance abuse within their homes, business, and communities. Uh, four brothers are having a drive-in film festival. If the drive-in film festival, a Brooklyn-based not-for-profit in its seventh year, is launching its annual event. Unlike many film festivals that celebrate films in one city or location, the drive-in film festival brings fresh, independent films to drive-ins across America. The festival will be launching its seventh season on Saturday, September 6th at Four Brothers Amenia Drive-In, New York State's newest drive-in theater to celebrate and promote film selections as well as bring awareness to the existence of drive-in movie theater. The movie will begin at 8 p.m. The cost is $8 per person, free admission for children age 10 and under. The Drive-In Film Festival chooses to screen at family-owned drive-ins like Four Brothers to bring awareness to both independent films and a dying American tradition. The event will include <coughs> film screenings, trivia, raffle prizes, free games, and giveaways. Victoria, can I interrupt because I did forget one other little thing. Um, there was a notice put up on the, on the town website for the Town of Amenia Recreation Senior Trip uh, the Hunterton Hills Playhouse presenting Breaking Legs. 
and it gives you the contact information to get a hold of Evelyn or Charlene and send them your check for $50.50. The only thing it doesn't give you is the date of the event, which is October 8th. So as soon as I get to a full-size computer with a keyboard, I can, I can put an update on that. I don't know how that ended up there. I don't know either. Unless one of the girls put it on and forgot to put mm -hmm. the date. But we'll get that fixed. October 8th. Good. Um, I also received the August 2014 newsletter from Rebuilding Together in Dutchess County. Uh, Rebuilding Together Dutchess County is accepting applications on a year-round basis. If you or someone you know may need our, their assistance, please encourage them to fill out an application. Keep in mind, in order to be considered for our April National Rebuilding Day program, applications must be received by October 31st, 2014. I uh, downloaded several applications. I have them outside the uh, town hall meeting room door, and I also have them on the table with the other pamphlets as you come in um, into the building. So if anybody is interested in that program, that's where you can get your applications. Is there any other town board business? Uh, Victoria, I just need a brief executive session on the void litigation. Okay. I make a motion for the town for the town board to go into executive session regarding pending litigation. Second. 